Coca-Cola, Coca-Cola. <laughs> How's everybody doing? Good. Okay. Hey, everyone. Thanks for being here. Thanks for joining us on a Mexican Crossing Lines. Tonight's show is about the LGBTQIA caravan, but it's not just about the LGBTQIA caravan. It's about the caravan in general. And a lot of people are wondering what's going on with the caravan at the border. I'm going to tell you things no one has. Um, I'm, I've been making uh, shows about this and breaking things down um, about the organizers, the leadership, uh, people that are supporting it, all the different organizations and groups that are supporting it. I'm going to be doing those shows in English and in Spanish now so that my uh, Mexican audience, the people that are in Central America, can understand and know all of the players in this game. And it is a game. Um, and so um, I'm very glad that you guys are all here with us to hear this important information and share it out to the world. I'm your host, Cindy Gomez Shemp. And I'm Duke Gomez Shemp. And you're listening to 88.1 FM KPPPLP Fargo Moorhead, where we are adding local color to your airwaves. I'm especially proud, Duke, that we covered so much uh, of these same <coughs> folks, see, same organizations, mm -hmm. same characters, if you will, and media platforms, as they call themselves, although they're just really live streamers. Yeah. Um, when they were here in North Dakota at Standing Rock, uh, and that has really helped us understand and identify who some of these players are and what their agenda is. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be bringing you more of that today. But first, I also want to thank our audience for your support, uh, for uh, sending us information, and for contacting me about other topics. Duke, how can folks do that? Well, there's many ways. Uh, one way is that we do have a, a message line where you can call and leave a message. The number is 701-566-0917. Again, it's 701-566-0917. Like I said, it's a message line. It also... You can leave a message up to three minutes. We may play it on the air. You tell us if you don't want us to play it on the air. You can also do email, cindy at kppfm.com and me, duke, at kppfm.com. You can also follow us on Facebook at 88.1 Fargo Moorhead, the People's Press Project, and Mexi-Can. And uh, you can uh, tweet us at uh, media underscore ppp. And don't forget to go to kppfm.com. That's where we put all of our podcasts and um, you know the audio that we, we sometimes play in the air here in Fargo, Fargo-Moorhead region. And we've been putting our videos up on YouTube, so they're more accessible to people that aren't on Facebook and more worldwide. Uh, you can uh, go to Duke1517, that's the name of the channel, and subscribe. We'd really appreciate that. And also, thank you for all your support, the information, the donations. We're a non-profit, non-commercial radio station in Fargo, North Dakota, Moorhead, Minnesota. We broadcast uh, over 5 miles, sometimes 15, 20 miles outside of town because it's so flat here. And so we have a, uh, a potential listening audience of about 180,000 people. And uh, if you go to our website, kppfm.com, and you'd like to support us, uh, again, we're a non-profit. Any donations are tax deductible. Go to kppfm.com dot com slash donate and on there is a paypal link that takes credit cards and uh, paypal and also you can mail a check and we'll send you out a receipt because we are a legitimate nonprofit, and we do appreciate everybody who's been supporting us we wouldn't be able to do this if it wasn't for you so thank you very much yes and uh i think that's really important to inform the public about frauds phonies mm -hmm. scams um and people that are trying to grab your heartstrings grab your attention and and pull and hopefully when they're pulling they're either forcing you to act in some way m you know making you react and then act whether that's volunteering uh supporting financially voting politically um there are a, a multitude of agendas that lie behind these organizations and groups uh, as I've been sharing with you since we started reporting on this stuff back at Standing Rock. So that continues to be the case here and I, w I last told you in the Caravan Consequences show that I was um, talking about what 
<clears throat> what the the people that were involved in Standing Rock did, how they ended up hurting innocent people. Um, and I told you that they don't much care about the people in, that are involved. Um, innocent bystanders like Kathleen Bennett, uh, her mom, Mary Trujillo, the fact that they uh, injured and those parties that they put an innocent person, they framed an innocent person and put them in jail. They're, they don't care about fabricating stories that hurt people. They, they uh, do not care about the safety of the individuals and innocent bystanders that get caught up in their um, uh, made up events, staged events, staged for Hollywood, staged for the media events. And yes, Many of those events, if not all of them, that happened at Standing Rock were staged. I showed you that they even had B and D list actors ready to perform stunts, to perform feats, to in to in you know incite violence, incite a clash between police and protesters. And I told you that that is exactly what they were there to do at the border. Guess what, folks? It's already happened. Well, wow. here is today's report. Hmm. This is from today's news, everyone. All right. Okay. This isn't from yesterday. This is from today. And I'm uh, not a, a witch. I don't have any magical powers to hmm. see into the future. I told you this was going to happen because this is their play. That's what they went and did at Standing Rock. So that they could show you how inhumane and racist the people of uh, Morton County and the people of North Dakota are. And I'm not saying that there is not a prevalence of racism in North Dakota. There is a problem with racism in North Dakota. But you don't have to manufacture a protest clash with police in order to drive home your point. That is disingenuous. This is what was uh, put out today. Um, it is, uh, a post by Jeremy White. All right. <clears throat> and here is what he p posted. Jeremy White is one of the people that has been, uh, in solidarity with Standing Rock and they're, they're, I think out in California. Uh, there are some of the pe first people that interviewed Ed Higgins of Activate Now, an mm -hmm. organization we've been following and telling you about. He posted just literally a few, you know, half an hour ago, uh, basically, that asylum seekers at our border, including women and children, are being fired upon with tear gas and rubber bullets. This is also being reported in Common Dreams in an article that I just saw circulating the photo there. And some of the pictures here, I think, are actually from that article in Common Dreams. Um, I don't know, uh, if it's true that one little girl has died as he stated, I have not found evidence to support that claim. But if you look down on this, uh, post, if you scroll down, you'll see that it says, Jeremy White says, J like standing rock. He says, What's happening at the border is what ha like what happened at Standing Rock. Yeah. You know why he's saying that? Because they're going to make sure that what's happening at the border looks like what's happening at Standing mm -hmm. Rock. I showed you that Myron Dewey was, you know, in New York at going to his awake dream after he came back from Mexico. Myron Dewey of Digital Smoke Signals, one of the so-called reporters of indigenous media out at Standing Rock, was saying... I was telling the Mexicans, I was telling the people in the caravan, this is what's going to happen. I can see the barbed wire. I can see the Carson concertina. I can see the rubber bullets and the mace and the gas and the tear gas. And he's like starting to, um, you know, foretell the future. Mm -hmm. And he is telling the caravan how it's going to go. This he was doing a week ago because that's exactly how they set things up to happen. Right now, here they are happening. By the way, I, I showed you last week on my show that there was a woman named Eileen, um, Michelle Eileen, formerly called Michelle Manos, 
who is the girlfriend of this guy, Jeremy White, who posted this thing about the border. And I showed you that she was going to Tijuana, not as a, a volunteer or as an activist, she said in her post, but simply because her car, her heart called her mm -hmm. to go to Tijuana right now, to go to San Diego, to bear witness, to bear witness to what's happening there. So, of course, Jeremy White is posting about what's happening there because his girlfriend is there to witness, right? Oh, yeah. And in her post saying that she was going down there, I showed you that the PR person hired by um, Wesley Clark Jr., the leader of the Veterans Stand for Standing Rock, which later became Veterans Respond and then something else and something else. Mm -hmm. Remember that? Oh, yeah. That guy? Well, um, she is named Seven McDonald. She's Seven McDonald of the... Uh, the daughter of country Joe and the fish fame. Oh yeah. She works PR in Hollywood and she, along with Winnie Wong, Desiree Kane, Maggie day and others were at the head of the PR work for all of the phonies and all of the D and B list actors, uh, that, that were brought out to, to, uh, standing rock and some of the other mainstream, uh, actors like Francis Fisher and, uh, what's her name? Um, Jane Fonda. Jane Fonda mm -hmm. and uh, the Hulk. Ruffalo. Mark, Mark, Mark Ruffalo. Ruffalo. And many of those other people that you saw out at Standing Rock are handled by these PR people that also put together the PR for Standing Rock mm -hmm. and the veterans. Okay? They're all involved in this now. They're involved here at the border now. And... Here's a post by none other than Francis Fisher. Here's here's Seven McDonald telling Michelle Eileen, Jeremy White's girlfriend, way to go. And she says, thanks, Michelle. Thanks, Seven. I'm learning. And Seven says, oh, my God, we all are. And then here's F Francis Fisher posting. Sacred Stone Camp, as you know, is LaDonna Brave Bull Allard of Standing Rock and crew. We've also seen people like Dean Dedman. Who, by the way, is also in Tijuana, along with a bunch of uh, Native Americans uh, associated with Errol Medicine, E-R-R-O-L. -E -R -R I showed you on one of my shows about the Caravan Conmen and the Caravan Crisis. Those three shows, I talked all about this stuff, Myron Dewey and all the people that are being, going, being sent to Mexico. But uh, Evan Duke... One of the people with veterans stand for Standing Rock, working closely with Michael, I mean, uh, Wesley Clark Jr. And also these Hollywood folks and PR people, not just at Standing Rock, but beyond that, at the camps that followed it, at protests that followed it. I showed you he's also heavily involved with Antifa. He started the Asylum Seeker Support Network page that I told you about. He also is responsible for the... Um, Occupy ice page. Okay, these things are all going to be important. I'm going to get into all the details of them, but I just wanted to show you Cuando digo que la virres put la cuando digo que la virres pintes porque traigo los pelos en la mano and when I tell you That I know what these folks are going to do. It's because they already did it. They already showed us and uh, They're pretty predictable now let me get to the topic of this uh, LGBTQIA caravan. Why do I want to start there? Well, because that was the first caravan that arrived at the border that you heard about. And you probably also heard that this caravan was being discriminated, that Mexicans are homophobic and transphobic, and that that's what their big deal was. And yeah, sure, there are some, there are issues of transphobia and homophobia in Mexico, just like there are here, okay? That's a given, but that's not what the people and the media in Mexico are actually complaining about. And I'm going to tell you what they have actually complained about and what they have actually reported on. Um, this is an article that I posted on 88.1 FM uh, Facebook page. If you want to go and find the article there yourself, or I can put it in the comments of this show, it is from Hiptex, Contenido Historia, okay? And obviously it is in Spanish, so mm -hmm. <laughs> you, 
you're going to need my help. But that's yeah. what I'm here for. So this says, Migrante Pitaya Queen resultó ser Mexicoamericano y estudiante de Harvard. And that says, Migrant Pitaya Queen is actually a Mexican-American and studied at Harvard. And then below the picture, it gives uh, Pitaya Queen's given name, birth name, and also a name which she has used as a transgender adult, Roberto Flote Guevara. And um, she also goes by Roberto Nikai Flote Guevara. I'll show you that in just a moment. Or by Nikai Flote. Nikai spelled, well, I'll show you. I'll show you in a minute all the different ways in which it is spelled. But first all, of all, <clears throat> I want to let you know that folks here, I mean, folks in Tijuana um, have seen and known Nikai Flote or Pitaya Queen. And actually, most recently, she just changed her name literally yesterday on mm -hmm. Facebook from Pitaya Queen to OJ Queen. So, I mean, it's dizzying and uh, it's difficult to follow. But this uh, um, woman had been mischaracterizing or at least allowing people to think she was Central American and a refugee and a migrant. And when she would speak, and she did mostly do the speaking for everyone in the caravan uh, and has in the past as well, she said, we are persecuted. We are fleeing violence and abuse. We Speaking in the, you know, all of us from the Central American caravan from Honduras, from whatever group she was with, she was saying, we. So I don't necessarily know that she was going around telling people, I am a Honduran woman, just like there wasn't people. Well, actually, there, there, there was actually people out at Standing Rock who were saying, I'm an Indian. I am an Indian. Did we lose our... Yeah, we are timed out. Completely timed out. Oh, it's there we are. We're back. Hopefully uh, <sighs> people will jump back on. We were timing out for a second there. Mm. If, you, um, uh, if, you had to, if you had a rolling screen, you know, the big circle rolling, we're back now. We're back on, but some of you might have been kicked off, so join us again. Yes, I'm sorry about that. Um, so, uh, Pitaya Queen um, has changed her name a lot of times. And it's not a coincidence to me that we have seen the same thing in actors out at Standing Rock, like Melanie Stoneman, who changed her name, like uh, Menape Lamare, mm -hmm. who changed his name. Not only their Facebook profiles changed almost monthly, almost yeah. like boom, boom. Mm -hmm. But most of these folks weren't using their real names uh, out uh, at Standing Rock and, in fact, gave different fake names, not only to the media, but also to the police. Yep. In the case of Kathleen Bennett, we saw that people were signing with their camp names. Mm -hmm. uh, rather, you know, these are statements that were given over to the police to arrest a woman who spent six months in jail, right? And we're back to timing out again and again and again. What? No, it was only once. That's not too bad. Okay, hopefully. When you get four in rows. I seeing red and yellow, red and yellow. Well, it's still broadcasting. It might be a little janky. Okay, I hope I hope y'all can can still follow the show. Mm -hmm. I hate it when that happens. Oh. Anyway, um, Roberto Flote Jr. Uh, is actually, um, and he also goes. Uh, she also goes by Junior. Um, but uh, here is um, a screen capture from her uh, LinkedIn. You can see. Here it is. And as you can see right there, it, it does say doctoral fellow at Harvard University, Na Native American program, program, Cambridge, Massachusetts. This is the head of the leader of the person that actually uh, put um, these people together to help them cross the border. Not only the Guatemalan with Mexico border, but also the northern border with the United States. Right. Mm -hmm. And. Um, she has been accused by people of the LGBTQIA community that is 
stationed there in Tijuana of trafficking children, of uh, allowing the children that were unaccompanied minors that she was in charge of caring for uh, have sex with the older trans and gay uh, people in the caravans that were brought through Tijuana last year. Um, and that um, she's also responsible for um, basically p giving these uh, women and, and queer kids uh, and adults false hope that they would be given asylum in the United States and that they would have host families and sponsors and that they were going to be able to work in the United States, um, according to the folks uh, whose who's, uh, statements I will let you read for yourself. They are in Spanish, but they have subtitles, fortunately. I did not put them there, so you can hear from them, from them um, what they claim Pitaya Queen has done in the past with other migrants. And she, they, they said that she has told them that they were going to be able to work in the United States that they had homes and opportunities waiting for them. And if all else failed, that they could make a lot more w money working in the sex industry right across the border from San Diego, where Americans that are crossing pay top dollar. Um, you can also find uh, a retelling of her own story in the uh, number two there. Um, if you scroll down, I think maybe it's in there. This is from a book that is available. I'm going to show you the cover of that book, but you can find out more about her story. But if you can see right there, go back up a little bit, please. Um, in the book, you can see that it's it, it reads, oh, you don't have that. You know what happened when you took uh, the screen capture? The You had it scrolled down on the um, book part right there. But it starts off at the chapter in the book that I'm about to show you the cover of um, with the title Nakai's Story, N-A-K-A-Y apostrophe S's story. And uh, unfortunately, you can't see that. But it says Nakai, middle initial R, last named Flote, F-L-O-T-T-E. And in parentheses, it says Mescalero. Lipan, L-I-P-A-N, Apache, okay? So, and, you know, you can see here on what's on the screen right now um, is part of the chapter about Nikai's life and um, her family and how, you know, many of, many live. She said, I have come from a mixed ma status family. I have undocumented siblings, cousins, aunts, and uncles. Many live as undocumented indigenous people in their own bisected land. So she's been talking about this ever since uh, way back when she was in school, um, way back when she was in, and these are, this book, by the way, is about students, Native American students studying in the United States and their perspectives about their life and their background and how they identify. According to this article, she has Ojinaga Chihuahua as her birthplace or the place where she was raised and um she lived in texas she was living in texas and she would alternate going back and forth between mexico and texas uh in the in the uh next one uh nope i think we have to go back one more sorry go to the bottom of that please yes so then it talks about here she is um with some friends Hers is the only pic uh, face not blurred out. I believe they're in Mexico City there. That looks just like it's right mm -hmm. out there where the Socalo is. You recognize yep, that? I do, yes. Duke? Yes, I do. Um, and according to her um, page, which is available online um, under the Harvard website, if you scroll down further, you'll see it. It says right there, She's listed in the PhD as a PhD in the Department of Anthropology at Harvard as Roberto Nakai, N-A-K-A-Y, Flote, right? In this book that I just was reading to you from, it has the middle initial R. So she put the Nakai first, the R is her middle initial, and then Flote in the book. So I'm just giving you all the different 
ways in which she has uh, been listed, right? Mm-hmm. And it says in the um, listing in Harvard that her interests include anth- legal anthropology um, and uh, media, recognition of the rights of indigenous uh, nations, the sovereignty of indigenous nations, the study of the militarization, militarization and uh, security, um, production of uh, knowledge, the industries, uh, uh, extractive industries, and the migration of LGBTQ people. Okay. She focuses on the geographical locations in the United States and in Mexico. On the border in between Guatemala and Mexico and in Central America. Okay. So here's a picture of her and her family. This is when she graduated from, I'm assuming, college? Yeah. Or high school? She um, collaborates or works with a number of different organizations that help transgender and gay people in Central America, Mexico, and Texas. And this is contradictory to what she had led people to believe about herself in Mexico, which is that she was a refugee migrant traveling from Central America, trying to get to the United States, fleeing from violence. Um, until this moment, Flote Guevara um, no se ha pronunciado respecto a ningún señalamiento del que ha sido objeto esperándose que durante las primeras horas de este lunes emita algunos proposi- proposicionamientos. Okay, so... She has um, not given a statement in in accordance to this article at the time that this was printed to these allegations that she's misrepresented herself, that she has lied. But I have found recent interviews that she did really just a few days ago that seem to be an answer to the allegations that are in this article. Okay, here is her Twitter account. It's right underneath that. Oh, it must be the next one. This is the Twitter account. I think you still got. There we go. Roberto Flote. And you can see the Twitter account says Hustler, indigenous immigrant from the block, divided by borders, united by love, queer, Indian Apache from Tex Mex, PhD, JD student at Harvard, Cambridge. And, um, You know, the way that things occurred in TJ was that there was a big hubbub because they arrived in Tijuana and they moved into a villa for 16, a capacity of 16 people, uh, as it is listed on Airbnb, and that they moved about 80 people into that villa. Mm in a neighborhood that felt very uncomfortable having them there because of what they had seen in the media about the caravan in general, not because they hate queer people, although that is how it has been conveyed. Mm -hmm. And maybe they have prejudice. I'm not saying that it's not possible or even likely that they are homophobic or that they are transphobic, but that is not the only reason, put it this way that these folks are upset and they do have every reason to question why Nikai Flote Guevara has not been forthcoming, why these folks have not been forthcoming and honest and straightforward about who they are and who is funding them and why they are here at the border asking for asylum. Um, it, it, It does look bad. As I said in my show, Caravan Consequences, it does look very, very bad especially in the American media, when Mexicans are saying that the migrants are dirty, that the migrants are are trashing their city, that the migrants are doing this and that. And I've seen on uh, OJ, 
Pitaya Queen, uh, Roberto Nakai, uh, Flote Guevara, whatever his name, her name is, on her own page, I have seen her talk about the fact that uh, Mexicans are complaining about how the caravan is dirty, but then it shows like a spring break crowd, but they don't have a problem with these folks. Hmm. You're wrong. Mexicans don't like anyone trashing their country, whether it's a tourist or a caravan. But there is a very big difference in a tourist that's bringing money and, you know, helping the economy and a caravan that is depleting resources from places where there are already people that are living under humanitarian strain, like in Oaxaca, where towns are still not being rebuilt because of the massive earthquake that left tens of thousands of people homeless. Okay? This is causing... Uh, a problem for the resources of Mexicans. There are people that are extremely poor that live in extreme poverty in Mexico. How do you think it makes them feel to see the caravan leave food, unopened food and water and clothing in the trash? Not not in a donation bin somewhere, not turned over to, to be recycled somewhere. No, in the trash. I mean, it's infuriating because... People in Mexico are starving. And to see the caravan act like this, it seems like they're being ungrateful. And they say, you know, uh, well, don't blame the actions of one person on everyone. If you haven't seen the footage, if you haven't really been in Mexico, then you really can't speak to what the people there are saying. And what I've seen, and I've taken the time to research a lot of different channels in a lot of different states, is consistent and they're showing you the evidence of it. There have been fights that have broken out amongst the, the caravan goers. There's been crimes that have been committed amongst the caravan goers. There's violent people that are they're traveling amongst the caravan goers. These things are true and they need to be addressed. And just because you're a progressive and you're a supporter of immigrants, as I have been all my life, I am a Mexican crossing lines, does not excuse this assault on Mexican city, cities and citizens, on its economy, on its people. And it, it's not fair to label them all as being xenophobic, racist, or transphobic, or homophobic, because they're calling out people who are lying, defrauding, stealing, being hypocritical. We all have a right to do that. That's what happened outside of this villa. By the way... This villa, and I'm going to show you that, is listed on Airbnb and is rented out. Uh, I've heard reports that it, it costs $500 a day. Um, uh, actually, I read somewhere else that it was uh, 320 or somewhere in that ballpark. I don't know if it's per day or per week. I think it might say, say per day. We're going to get to that graphic in a minute so you can see for yourself. But in other words, not cheap. Where are people staying uh, in, in um, the caravan? They're staying in tent cities that have been set up for mm -hmm. them. They're staying in shelters okay. uh, and uh, places that have been set up for their care, right? And, and on a sidewalk, just, just on a sidewalk. Well, yes. Some of them have opted to sleep on the streets or to make uh, makeshift shelters for themselves. But the truth is, that many of them have refused to stay in the shelters. And as I have reported in my past shows, it wasn't because there wasn't food like they said, or that they weren't being given water like they said, uh, or because there wasn't enough, um, that they weren't being allowed to go in, or they, that it was unsanitary, or that they didn't want to give them asylum, or I mean, not asylum, a shelter, mm -hmm. but rather because they didn't feel like being in there. And or they didn't want to eat the food that was being served. And they basically lied to the cameras, which reporters repeatedly showed to be a lie by just walking inside the shelter and showing that were people eating, people in line eating food, water, accommodations. Um, I'm going to prove that this is a setup and that people are being herded like cats and they're being uh, coached in what to say and what to do. I'm going to show that to you in my shows. 
Um, people say that that is what Pitaya Queen does with the, L the LGBTQ people. So they may have scripted stories about why they are seeking asylum. They know what to say to authorities. They know what to say to the television because Pitaya Queen tells them that is what is alleged. Okay. She, she and the contingent that came to stay at this villa uh, were met by a crowd of angry neighbors asking questions. Does this mean that the uh, crime in our neighborhood is going to increase? Are we going to have a problem with you? And they were met with angry people. Uh, an angry response from, from the um, Pitaya and crew from the LGBTQ caravan. Can you put the uh, third, the, the last graphic up again? Oh, there's you, two more. Th there's this more. is the video tape. Um, we'll show you a clip of that that's embedded in one of the videos I'm going to show you in a minute. But if you scroll down, she has also been implicated in a fire that happened at a shelter that she and others were staying at, which you see her posting about here. And she posted, as you can see, now her name is O.J. Pitaya, but here, I mean, in this article, it was Pitaya Queen, but I have the same exact article up on my screen that I'm reading from that links directly to her account here, and it says O.J. Pitaya on it. Okay. We are timing out again, oh, no, briefly. Back. And she posted this saying, the loving shelter Caritas in Tijuana that at one time during the caravan received 35 plus LGBT members of the community was set on fire last night. Would you like to continue reading that, honey? Yes, this is how much they hate us. This is how transphobia works. They want to kill us. Please call the U.S. border authorities and tell them all LGBT asylum seekers waiting to present at the border should be received now because their lives are at risk. Okay. According to this article and other reports, they are accusing that Pitaya Queen might have been the person that set this fire to give them an excuse to say that their lives are being threatened in Mexico. Hmm. They came into Mexico saying they were fleeing violence forced prostitution, beatings, and gender discrimination. Um, and then, once in Mexico, they're saying Mexicans are just as bad or worse. We're in danger. We got to go. We got to go. We got to go. They are trying to kill us. You know, one of the things that you have to be able to prove to American authorities in order for them to grant you asylum is that you have an immediate threat mm -hmm. to your life. Yeah. Just saying. Mm -hmm. The allegations are all in this article. Furthermore, here you will see that Pitaya Queen also posted a GoFundMe after she claimed that she was attacked in Tijuana and she needed to raise money $2,500 in order to pay for the hospital bill this is a picture that she posted along with her GoFundMe uh, along with her you know uh, allegations that she was beaten by hate people the, pe they, the people that beat her mm -hmm. beat her because she is transgender that is what she was claiming so so she wasn't just saying that someone beat her. She was saying that someone beat her because she's queer and transgender. And she said in her post that the attack occurred during a time that they were demanding that the U.S. government receive and give asylum to trans and queer people. So she is tying the attack on her directly to, uh, directly to her request for queer people and trans people to be given asylum in the United States. Hmm. And she's saying that that's what happened to her as wow. she was trying to request asylum for herself and the queer people in the caravan. So um, this is what is expected or this is what is being said about Pitaya Queen that people are upset about. 
she has misrepresented herself or at the very least she's allowed people to believe things about her that are not the case. Now I want to show you um, Mikai Flote, how she also spells it with an I at the end there on her YouTube channel. This oh, is okay. one of, this is from YouTube. So you see, she's got a variety of different ways in which she spells her name. Maybe she's trying out different names before she lands on one. I don't know. That's possible. It happens with trans people sometimes. Um, they're trying to find their, their name, you know, how they feel, what they're, you know, but she has been called Anaka. Now, I'm going to show you a video from El Mero Tijuana, Tijuana in which it talks about this. Brace for your, for your um, video because it's in Spanish, but I'm, don't worry. I'm going to explain to you what it says. But for those of you who speak Spanish and can, you can verify for yourselves that this is exactly that it is what it says. I say it says in just a minute. If I, I want you to pay close attention because they say in here that she is accused of using drugs. She is accused of uh, misinforming people that her name is Anaka. Anaka. Now listen to how closely Anaka sounds to Nakai. Nakai. Right? And in an interview in which I'm going to show you, she introduces herself. They ask her, ¿Cómo te llamas? And she goes, Anakai. Ugh. Did you hear that? Mm -hmm. She pauses for a second. She goes, like, uh, like, um, what is my name? She goes, Anakai. That sounds like Anaka. Mm -hmm. You hear that? Yep. I think that's why people may have confused what she said. And I think she's doing it on purpose. Because she hasn't corrected anyone that has labeled her Anakai. Okay? But they say that Anaka uh, has, um, or Pitaya Queen, as she is actu actually known on Facebook, or it was until... Yesterday is a drug user that she committed or that she is tied to the arson at Caritas um, shelter that she is uh, she she brought over to the United States and of course also into Mexico from Central America. A woman, a trans woman by the name of Roxana, uh, who was infected with HIV um, AIDS and who died in a Texas um, detention center because she was not given proper medical care or she was not given the care that she needed to um, treat her uh, HIV. Um, many people uh, many people accuse uh, Pitaya Queen of being responsible for this Roxana, uh, for Roxana being detained, for Roxana being um, killed, for Roxana dying, for, for what happened to her occurring in the first place. Um, they also accuse the um, villa people uh, renting the villa. They accuse the people of renting the villa of exploiting those or being expected to be those um, ready to exploit the people that are in the LGBTQIA caravan because uh, they say that they are going to be doing sex work either in the United States or in Tijuana if they don't get a chance to cross over and get asylum. So here's that video from El Mero Tijuana on the LGBTQIA caravan. One. El día 11 de noviembre del 2018, un grupo de personas de la comunidad LGBT que se separó de la caravana de migrantes centroamericanos que estos días recorre México, ha llegado a la ciudad fronteriza de Tijuana, desde donde pedirán asilo político a los Estados Unidos. Estos 85 migrantes que viajaron en autobuses son los primeros integrantes de la caravana en alcanzar la frontera con Estados Unidos y llegaron a la ciudad después de pasar por Sonora y Mexicali, Baja California, México. Uno de los videos transmitidos por Facebook en playas de Tijuana, 
con la llegada de los miembros de la comunidad, sirvió para que fuera identificado uno de los líderes que esconde varios secretos detrás del argumento de la persecución en Honduras. Un informante que por seguridad pidió anonimato, establece que Ana K., como dijo llamarse, no es hondureño, sino un ciudadano americano con residencia en Texas, que se ha dedicado a traer homosexuales de Centroamérica para cruzarlos a Estados Unidos y ejercer la prostitución. Las personas que lo identificaron narran que se trata de quien en Facebook se ubica como Pitaya Queen, un homosexual que en mayo fue quien trajo a un primer grupo de homosexuales de Centroamérica, logrando que varios sí cruzaran a Estados Unidos y otros se quedaran en México. Según la denuncia, Pitaya Queen es drogadicto, y en mayo pasado se vio involucrado en el incendio del albergue Caritas en Tijuana, incluso fue quien trajo a Tijuana a Roxana, un homosexual que ocultó padecer VIH y murió por la falta de tratamiento médico. Incluso se señala que los miles de dólares usados para pagar la costosa renta de la casa en playas de Tijuana sale de quienes esperan su llegada a Estados Unidos para explotarlos sexualmente, y no de abogados altruistas como este mencionó. Haciendo un recorrido por el Facebook de Pitaya Queen, se pudo comprobar lo dicho por el denunciante. Estuvo en Tijuana en mayo. Se involucró en el incendio del albergue Caritas en Tijuana. Tenía nexos con Roxana. Es fácilmente apreciable su vínculo con Texas, de donde es originario por los posteos con información LGBT de ese estado. El amplio dominio del idioma inglés, lo que deja en claro que no es un hondureño buscando asilo. Hay posteos redactados en un inglés casi perfecto. De no lograr el asilo en Estados Unidos, buscarán quedarse en la frontera donde saben que se gana más dinero en la industria del sexo, haciendo que estadounidenses crucen a Tijuana para pagar por estos servicios. De comprobarse las delicadas acusaciones, estaríamos ante un grupo de explotadores sexuales que buscan aprovechar la situación de la caravana para lograr sus fines. El denunciante que pide anonimato por seguridad tiene videos en donde Pitaya Queen actuaba de forma ilegal en medio de las drogas y orientando a los demás homosexuales del grupo llegado a Tijuana en mayo pasado de cómo hablar y qué decir, o qué callar ante funcionarios de Estados Unidos. ¿Tú qué opinas? Si no eres de esta ciudad, Tijuana, deja tu comentario y comenta de dónde eres. ¿Qué opinas al respecto y qué esperas de estos sucesos? Sígueme en mis redes sociales para estar al pendiente de mi contenido. Yo soy Yo Forever Pain. Hasta, hasta la próxima. So, uh, that's, um, again, I've translated what it said to you. I thought, you know, you could be listening for some mm -hmm. of the things. It's in Spanish, but again, I'm going to be doing this show in Spanish and in English. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I want to curate all of the information for people in one spot. And I know that there are many in my audience who are bilingual, so... De nada. Mm -hmm. um, next, I want to show you the post that she made on her Facebook page about uh, Caritas um, uh, being um, the Facebook 18 May Caritas post in which she said they're going to kill us. Uh, one more. There you go. It's right next to the video we just watched. Here you, you have it from her own Facebook page. And here is another post. Uh, this one is from the Mero Tijuana Bar. And here you can see from the Mero Tijuana, the people that produced the video I just showed you, they took these pictures and they posted them to their Facebook page speaking about people in the caravan. You can see a group of people from the caravan which they have been following. They're standing out in front of a bar. And then there's a picture of them inside of the bar. And um, if you look at what was posted, it says, um, look at this group. They claim they're here to work. They drink in the street, but, and they, and, and in, And they drink in the streets of Playas de Tijuana. And then they, so public intoxication and drinking in public is not allowed. Just, just so you know, that's what they're complaining about. Drinking in the streets. 
So they drink in the streets. They claim they claim that they come here for work, but he says they're they're drinking in the streets. They're partying instead, in the streets of Tijuana and playas of Tijuana. And then they they get mad at us because we won't allow minors in the bar. On top of that, they're yelling to all four of the winds that they've got silver to spend, and that they're not asking anyone for handouts laugh emoji so this post is saying that they're out there bragging like hey we got money to spend our money is is good and we're here to have a good time now whatever you may think about these allegations i i want to be very clear um and I think Pitaya uh, addresses this when, in one of her response interviews, which I'm, which I'm going to show you. But she says, you know, uh, people accuse us of being prostitutes. You know, some people do sex work and that's what they do. You know, um, if you take issue, if you're a prude in some way and you take issue with that, I don't know what to tell you. Um, people have been doing sex work for as long as humans have been around i think right <laughs> uh, the condition of how people are treated and the inequality uh, of gender and the inequality uh, and hate of um, homosexuals and uh, transgender people is prevalent and, w and it makes them more vulnerable but to me what is a travesty is the exploitation of those people in the LGBTQIA caravan and also in the caravan of Central Americans. These are people that come from vulnerable populations that are the most poor, the most um, ignored populations that, that nobody fights for their human rights. They're also the most easily exploitable. I'm angry because these so-called progressives, these faux progressives and people like her that are willing to, uh, you know, form part of the elite of Cambridge University and then feels entitled to go into Central America, Mexico and crossing people over into United States, um, getting people hurt and killed in the process uh, because she feels like it's her calling in life to do mm -hmm. this um, so that she can raise her own profile for her Harvard investigative work. But let me tell you, we are not, you know, uh, characters in a movie, in a Hollywood movie. Indigenous people are not toys. We are not extras for your effing documentary at Standing Rock or anywhere else. We are human beings with lives. And the fact that there's a, a bunch of Standing Rock sellouts, like the leadership of Standing Rock, that s called people that pulled on the heartstrings, uh, heartstrings of indigenous people and never told them that they were going to put them in violent confrontations with the police, that they could end up in injured or killed or arrested. That is an exploitation that I cannot forgive. And I will continue to call these people out for doing it. So here is um, another uh, post. And th there's, there's another... Um, post in here somewhere i'm not sure if i included it i hope i did where they're another one of the leaders that you were going to see in this video are actually out drinking and partying so in this next video called pitaya queen el nativo americano que es líder de la caravana migrante lesbico um it's about six minutes long i'm going to tell you what it says and what it's talking about for those of you who are um spanish deficient it talks about how the caravan arrived and that was about 80 to 90 people in total that Pitaya Queen was passing himself herself off as a Honduran that the villa that was rented by human rights organizations and groups are the ones who are actually supporting and sanctioning this travel across the border. It asks um, and surmises that Mexican the Mexican government is helping some of these people so it in it shows the video of the confrontation with the people from the villa and they accuse they they believe that the mexican government is somehow giving them support which nikai nakai tells them 
Um, the Mexicans didn't aren't helping pay for their transportation or supporting them. But they she does acknowledge the Mexican government gave them transportation. So that's a form of, of support. Um, she, the, the neighbor lady she's talking to says she's afraid for the security of the neighborhood. And Nick, Nakai ret retorts that, well, you know, she says, how am I supposed to uh, feel uh, safe from you? I could be afraid of you, she hmm. responds. And she stresses that the lady is classist. She tell she turns the tables on this lady and says, you, you hate us. She's talking about herself, herself included. You hate us because we're poor people. You don't want us lowly Central American poor people in your neighborhood. We paid for this Airbnb. Supporters paid for this Airbnb for us so we could be in a safe place. And you don't want us in your backyard. You don't want us in your neighborhood because you don't want low-class people in your neighborhood. You're classist. That's what she says. You don't want low-class people. Nakai is not low-class. I don't. Can you call someone that goes to Harvard low-class? No. <clears throat> no, no, they're not pe not not peasants from Central America. You know, and um, the the whole idea that um, this person's been continually passing herself off as a migrant, you know, and, um, it really, uh, construes the issues, you know, and it's, a, it's really hard. It's, it's hard to talk about because it's another fraud and we have to bring out these frauds because they're having a really large impact on, you know, the rights of people to migrate, you know, the rights of people to be safe. And when they start using money and fraud people out of money and, you know, going to bars and living it up and, you know, what does it remind you of? Standing rock. The casino, you know, all the stuff that went on in the casino when people were, were protesting the Dakota Access Pipeline, you know, and, and yet they're living it up over at the bar down the road, you know, meeting up with the Dapple workers and the Tiger Swan people and then going back to camp and pretending that they are something that they're not. You know, it's just, it's it's um, it's very disturbing. Mm -hmm. And as you saw, they are now putting toddlers, mothers in harm's way for their photo op. Because they know that some of the people in there are going to incite violence so that they can have their violent clash. So that they can push for the policy changes that they want by pulling on your heartstrings and forcing you to act. Forcing you to take a side on this issue. Polarizing Americans even further. So here's that video. Oh, let me just finish uh, by saying that um, she acknowledges that Mexicans... Uh, have been kind to them in the video and she said they say the leaders say that some of the people in the caravan had no food and water for days at a time that some of them even fainted because they didn't have enough sustenance and uh, liquid and that um, they were asked when the caravan took off from Central America and began traveling and they claimed they started out in October in San Pedro Sula and also in this video it says um, Nikai told the, the uh, onlookers neighbors that they're not delinquents that they're fleeing crime the neighbors said that they have a zero tolerance policy for violence in their neighborhood and that they want peace to reign um, here's that video el material es de Alfredo Álvarez en el cual se denuncia que un ciudadano nativo americano de nombre Roberto Nakai sería el líder que está organizando la caravana migrante, la caravana eh, lésbico gay, como se ha denominado, caravana trans gay. Esta caravana que llegó a Tijuana en un promedio de 80, 90 personas, los cuales pues vienen dirigidos por una persona que se hace pasar por hondureño, y que en realidad es un estudiante de Harvard, nativo americano. Por aquí les dejo el video para que lo vean. Eh, 
O este está conyugando a que ustedes vengan aquí a este lugar. ¿Por qué no llegaron a playa de Tijuana? O sea, al lugar. Que vienen y se establecen a, a una zona residencial en donde estamos todos los vecinos del Santa Paz con nuestros hijos a perturbar exactamente la, 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 este, la paz, la tranquilidad de todos nosotros. Sí, madrecita, pero nosotros la intención no es venir la molestia. Ahora dime una cosa, ¿cómo? ¿Por qué tú llegaste a las camionetas del gobierno? ¿Quién te invitó a que llegaras y te subieras? Los mismos comisionados de derechos humanos. Los mismos comisionados de los derechos humanos. O sea, que Porque el gobierno está derecho. de acuerdo con esto que está pasando. Y el presidente Peña Nieto tiene la culpa de esto que está sucediendo. Y está, Porque muy bien se podían haber detenido a las personas para haberles ayudado de alguna manera. No, pero tú vienes a casa, ¿verdad? Y vienes a, 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 a qué vienes. Yo, a ver tu Yo quiero que me maten en mi casa. Yo vine a casa. Pues no sé con quién te juntas. Dime con quién andas y te diré quién eres. Solo, solo el cucharón está dejando las frijoles, madre. madre. No, hemos, visto todo, hemos estado siguiendo la secuencia de todos desde el camino de que entraron. No nosotros somos de señora. Yo no te dije eso. Uno de los dos que yo no lo que estoy diciendo Calmado. es que se ubicaron mal. Si el gobierno les está ayudando y les está apoyando, pues que les ponga no, un centro, un lugar a donde lleguen. Déjeme hablar, yo voy a hablar, sigo yo de hablar, está bien. El gobierno no está pagando para estar aquí. Llegaron las camionetas y los trajeros de gobernación. Yo lo dije. Ellos nos prohibieron transporte, eso no quiere decir que pagaron. Ah, por les, pro, les prohibieron, entonces el gobierno está de acuerdo en todo lo que está sucediendo. No sé si el gobierno está de acuerdo. No sé que si saben, pero no lo vas a decir. Te voy a decir algo, nosotros pagamos para estar aquí con el dinero que por medio de la empresa Airbnb. Pero no son bien recibidos, Escúcheme, sabemos lo hablar. que les sucede, pero aquí no son bien recibidos, por favor. Ubíquense ustedes a los derechos humanos para que les den un asilo y les den apoyo. Nosotros... Porque estamos muy inconformes, no tenemos seguridad. Hay personas que pueden estar atrás de ustedes queriéndoles hacer daño y vamos a ir nosotros. No, señor, usted sí. también me puede hacer daño y yo no lo puedo saber. Ah, Solo no, porque usted es de no clase me está alta. Entendiendo. No, usted no me está entendiendo a mí. Solo porque usted es de clase alta y nosotros. No, 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 eso no, no, es no, lo no, no, que no, es. Estamos, no, estamos, estamos, estamos tratando de proteger la seguridad de nuestras familias y nosotros. Nosotros pagamos por este espacio. Nosotros pagamos por este espacio. Nosotros pagamos por este espacio. El monto que es el espacio. Ella sí que se quede como la que se nos hoy y resulta. Nosotros adelante, nosotros vamos a mostrarle que somos trabajadoras, que tenemos sueños, que tenemos sueños. Con permiso. Con todo el respeto, le decimos que no le vamos a molestar. ¿va? Nosotros estamos aquí, no le vamos a molestar y así vamos. Pues antemano también agradecer a la Policía Federal porque también nos ha venido acompañando en esas calles que se han sido duras, muchas personas han tratado, han desmayado porque no han tenido ni qué tomar agua, ¿verdad? Pues como les digo, los comisionados de derechos humanos pues, hemos tenido, creo que ha sido el mejor apoyo de ellos, ¿verdad? Y del pueblo mexicano, eh, pues la gente cuando llegamos a un pueblo es increíble de ver el corazón que tienen los mexicanos, ellos eh, a veces dejaban su, cocían una libra de frijoles, tal vez era la de ellos que se iban a comer y no importaba, con tal de que nosotros comiéramos, ¿verdad? Y tal vez no alcanzaba para todos, pero así, así era. El, el corazón de ellos era dar. Alrededor de... Ok, de... Desde que salimos... De quién era día, para ser exacto. Más o menos, ¿cuándo entraron? En realidad la caravana empezó desde el 12 de octubre. En la terminal de San Pedro Sula. Aunque Tijuana es una ciudad conformada por muchos migrantes, hay opiniones también de muchos ciudadanos que no quieren que vengan, que no quieren que lleguen, que creen que son delincuentes, que traen... O que es la fachada que nos tienen. ¿Qué, qué, ¿Qué, creen que son... ¿Qué decirle a esa población? Creo de que... Creen que las personas que venimos eh, somos vándalos y creen de que so venimos a, a ser delincuentes cuando en realidad no. Venimos huyendo de un país que hay mucho crimen hacia nosotros. Y aquí también, como aquí como yo soy su vecino, yo aquí vivo en esta sección, y les voy a decir una cosa, aquí todo está calmado. Hemos mirado lo que está sucediendo en las noticias y todo lo que está sucediendo, lo que están haciendo personas como ustedes. Ahora nosotros lo que le pedimos, que por favor, aquí tenemos cero tolerancia de, de cualquier clase de violencia. Porque aquí, a cualquiera le pueden preguntar, aquí en la sección Coronado, todo está pero bien tranquilo. Tenemos hasta policías aquí patriando. Así es que por favor, hay que mantener esta, 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 
clase de facilidad, porque eso es lo que necesitamos aquí también. Y si vienen ustedes y ahora esto se va a hacer más feo, yo creo que esta ciudad tiene mucho, mucho crimen. Ya sí, rebasamos el 2000, ya, ya si llevamos el trofeo arriba. Bueno, mm. la, la intención de nosotros pues no, no es venir a provocar... Eh... So, uh, that's, uh, again, that... I already summarized what was in that video. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's important for you to see for yourselves, even if you don't understand, I can, I'm telling you what it says, um, that, that the people uh, have genuine concerns, not because they're queer, but because of what they've seen reported in the media of the violence, of the uh, you know crimes that are being committed, the danger that it poses for their security. That's what they're asking questions about. Um, of course, uh, this is um, also a hypocrisy because you see that she says in this video, we, you don't want us here because we are low class. Mm -hmm. Well, she mischaracterized herself as part of that group because I told you she's actually a middle class American in an interview that you're going to hear out of her own mouth in a little bit in response to all of this news media that's come out about her exposing that she's really from the United States and that she is a doctoral student from Harvard um, and that she comes from a comfortable background and all of that. Now she is openly telling people she went to Harvard and that she's educated. She says, not all of us are this, not all of us are that. Some of us are Americans with a lot of support from Hollywood, from money, mm. from media platforms. A lot of us are highly organized and funded and come from privileged backgrounds and have never had to experience the hunger, the fear, the persecution that the people in this caravan that I'm with do. Uh, she, she never told people that before. And the way that she's saying it now is, well, you know, um, I've always been transparent. So what? You found out that I used to go, that I was a Harvard student? I'll, I, I'm, I don't have a problem telling people that. Everybody knows what I do, how I do it. Everyone knows that I have a lot of support. Why do you think migrants even come with me? Because they know. I have American sponsors waiting for them. I have homes. I have all sorts of different kinds of support already set up because I have connections. That's why I chose to do this work because of my connections, because of my capabilities. When you see here that when given the opportunity to explain herself to the neighbors, she could have told them that. I mean, that could have changed the whole conversation. Listen, ladies. I've got American funding, American backing. I went to Harvard. I'm a doctoral student. Hello. But she didn't say none of that, did she? Mm -mm. No. She's only said it recently, and I think there's a reason why she's hiding who she is. Here is uh, Alvarez, uh, one of the reporters out in Tijuana, posting on Facebook about the Airbnb that they rented. As you can see, it says it's a villa. An entire villa was rented out by this group of LGBTQIA caravan goers, one of the first groups to arrive in Tijuana. And it is a, a castle, a VIP castle. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do you expect people from the caravan to stay in accommodations like this? Mm -hmm. It seems a little unfair when there are people that are sleeping in the conditions that Duke and I have just described to you. Yep. Don't you think? Don't you think if you're going to rent a villa, a castle this big, that, you know, that money could have been better spent allowing a whole bunch of other people mm -hmm. from the caravan to go even for a day and stay in a nice hotel <clears throat> or, yeah. uh, you know, uh, getting get them out of the shelter, get them off of the street for a mm -hmm. day? Yep. I don't know. This is how they spent it instead. And he posted, well, they didn't end up going to the shelter. He's speaking about the LGBTQIA caravan because they were supposed to go to a shelter called Jardín de las Mariposas, but they didn't end up staying there. And there is controversy. There's a lot of uh, rumors and innuendo about why they didn't end up staying there. Um, but I will let you hear from 
the people at the center, at the shelter, the gay shelter, it's a queer and gay shelter that specializes in helping migrants, uh, not only people from Tijuana or pe people that are going through, because Tijuana and many border cities like Tijuana are known as ciudades de paso, cities where people pass, pass through, okay. meaning cross over to the United States. So there are unique business opportunities, but there are also unique challenges. A lot of people just get deported, whether you're from Central America or Mexico, doesn't matter. They get they leave you right across the border, right in Mexico. And then it's up to you to go all the way back home. And a lot of people don't. Uh, many of them uh, choose to ask for asylum in Mexico. By the way, the caravan has been offered asylum in Mexico. They've been offered asylum if they qualify for asylum in Mexico. And so he says the migrant caravan did not go to El Jardín de las Mariposas, the albergue, the shelter. Los migrantes llegaron a una casa rentada por Airbnb en 230 dólares por noche para 16 personas. It's, a, it's, a, it, it's supposed to accommodate 16 people. It rents for $230 per night. Okay. According to Alfredo Alvarez. And he said, but they put 75 people in the house. Hmm. And they did. So the next one here is a picture of the people that are in the house. Okay. I don't know if that's 75. I don't know if that's all of them, but they are from Diversidad Sin Fronteras. You can see it's posted right by them on their Facebook. There's a post. Can you show the post? Yes. Diversidad Sin Fronteras. You see it right there. Okay. And next I will show you another picture that was posted on El Mero Tijuana that has been reporting about these guys. You saw uh, this gentleman with the um, blonde mm -hmm. highlights in the front yep. in the turquoise blue shirt. He was one of the people giving an interview in that video you just watched mm -hmm. in which they had that confrontation outside of the villa, right? With mm -hmm. the neighbors. And he is shopping at Costco. There he is shopping at Costco. Hmm. Meanwhile, as you know, many people in the caravan are... Uh, getting food from shelters are getting food along the way because they didn't have the means. Obviously, some caravan goers are better than others. Some caravan goers are more equal than other caravan goers. Some people in the caravan get to stay in villas and get to eat from Costco and Starbucks and go out on, on the town and have a good time. And other people have to sleep in a shelter and other people have to eat shelter food. And other people have to sleep outside. I don't know why that is, but it appears that that is what is happening. Hmm. Here is another picture. This is another post. By the way, I didn't put it in just for time savings, but there was another post in El Mero Tijuana of the same guy that I just showed you, one of the leaders uh, of spokespersons, at least for the caravan, with the yellow highlights in which he is sitting inside the bar that they were, took a picture of them at. In front of a tub, a tub, a metal tub, you know, like those metal tubs you wash your clothes in, oh, yeah. soak things in, of beer, <clears throat> oh. like a whole tub <laughs> of it. Wow. You can go check that out on their page if you like. Uh, anyway, um, here's a post from the uh, Soy, Yo Soy 664 Tijuana, okay? And it's also, again, exposing him. I just want you to see. People in Mexico are upset about it. And it's not just one news source. It's not just one platform. Mm -hmm. It's not just one place in Tijuana. It's a lot of different places that are upset because they feel they were lied to. And they ask, uh, breaking news, they say, hashtag breaking news, who is Yolanda? And um, it says, who, uh, who leaked information about Roberto Nakai Florete? Why? And who who did it? Why and who? This is gonna this is about to get good. Um even more so than many thought. So speculation hmm. about why the Jardin the um was gonna give them asylum ended up not giving or not asylum shelter. Shelter, shelter excuse yes, me. yes. And they ended up staying 
at an Airbnb instead. Lots of speculation over that. Here's another post uh, from a Veronique's Phoenix about the caravan. You see it is posting that the queer and trans migrants have split off from the main caravan for their safety because they suffer at greater risk, right? What else does it say there, dude? They're now? Uh, for their safety, they're now the first ones arriving at the border, leading the way and setting. We don't have the rest of the post. Mm -hmm. Here's a picture. Do you see the guy with the yellow hair? Yes, I see him. In the pink shirt? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Where does it say they are? It says they are in uh, the Versidad Sin Fronteras. Right, that's the group that posted it. Okay. It's, um... Today, the 50 LGBT migrants walked from, from Matias Romero to Ayucatan, Veracruz. Okay. On a journey characterized by rejection, discrimination, not only by locals, but by caravaneers too. Uh, so the very people from their own caravan that they came with from Honduras have rejected them and put them in danger. So they have to split off on their own mm -hmm. and hitchhike and go. And here's where they are. They're requesting donations yep. below clothes, shoes, deodorant, razors, soap, socks. They need money. Yep. Venmo, please. Okay. Next. Let me show you a post of another post of Veronique Phoenix. And there is Pitaya Queen. Oh. That's Pitaya Queen. Mm -hmm. She's sitting in front of a laptop. She's sitting next to another transgender individual. If you scroll down further, it tells you what her name is. And it looks like they've got um some organizing work there to do and it's joshua allen is the name of that other lgbtq individual and this was just posted recently you can see her name here on this post is oj pitaya she's already changed her name to that mm -hmm. it says that w they are in tijuana what are joshua allen and oj doing in tijuana right now why they're working overtime to support the lgbtq migrant caravan in the short few hours that i've been here I've witnessed an extreme amount of racism and xenophobia. Mm -hmm. And so on, on and on it goes. Look, folks, I know that there is xenophobia. I know it's, there's transphobia. I know that there is homophobia in Mexico. I know that it exists here. I know that it exists in Central America. But these folks are using it like since it's a known quantity, since it's a given that this is what, these folks suffer you can say that that is an immediate need that they are an emergent need right now and you can concoct scenarios in which whether or not they are real you have an immediate need maybe you have a clash with police maybe you have a clash with people um, that, that are attacking you maybe you make up an arson to say that they want to kill you who knows but what I do know is that once again you must have a credible threat of immediate danger to your life in order to be granted asylum in the United States. <laughs> and that's what these folks want. That's, the, that's what their goal has been the entire time. It's not a negative goal. It's not a bad goal. I'm not in, against asylum. I'm not against asylum seekers. I'm against being um, astroturfed. I'm against immigration and asylum and all of these issues, which are very near and dear to my heart, which I have been working on and fighting for my entire life, to be astroturfed by a bunch of people who want to use this issue and exploit these people for political and financial gain for themselves to elevate their profile or their brand. And who will, because of their careless handling of such a delicate issue, such an important topic they will end up costing us mexicans asylum seekers immigrants and 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 people of color that that come here seeking uh naturalization more harm than good look what they did in standing rock and i showed you when they uh wittingly or unwittingly end up you know putting someone in jail and leaving someone in a hospital to die they won't care. In fact, 
if you pointed out that they've done something that's put other people in harm's way for a political agenda, they will cover it up. Mm -hmm. They will all start covering it up. Yeah. That's what they did at Standing Rock, and that's what they're doing here. That's what they're doing now. Here is another post by Joshua Allen, including Joshua Allen and Pitaya. What's this one called? Maybe This is called Allen Pitaya, Veronique's Phoenix. There we go. Veronique's Phoenix. That one. Yeah, we already looked at this one. Oh, did we? Yeah. I'm sorry. We're so the next one. one is Alan Sandoval. Make America fear again. Otaya, uh, OJ Pitaya says, can you read that one, honey? To all trans, queer allies in California or the U.S. that are able to cross the border, we need you on the ground for these upcoming weeks. Message me. We need to protect each other. The more we are, the more shields we can be to protect our Central American LGBT relatives, one of the most vulnerable groups in the world. Let's show them that kindness and empathy are more powerful than hate, xenophobia, and bigotry. Let's make racists afraid again. And then some people commented, you know, uh, Veronica, Gloria, for those of us too far away, there is, some, is there something else we can do? Necessitian fondos y ciertos materiales. Do you need money or resources? Mm -hmm. What can we send you? And she says, Folk need one funds to sponsors. Funds? They need money? Yep. And they sponsor. may need sponsors. And Veronica says, How can we send you funds? How can, can anybody living in the United States, anywhere in the country, be a sponsor? Hmm. And she says, Yes. As long as they are U.S. Residents. Residents. Okay. And then someone says, what? How do you become a sponsor? Mm -hmm. You simply submit a letter stating you are supporting an asylum seeker for their asylum proceedings. It is completely free. Inbox me. Okay. Would you be able to send me the information on this as well? <coughs> mm -hmm. Me three. That is not as important, but it's about somebody saying that they want Say, there's a woman, a mother from Honduras that is looking for her gay child. And they know that that child is in Tijuana, but they don't, they haven't heard from him for a week and they want her help. And she says, he's with us. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. And then they ask her, where can we send you funds again? Yep. How can we help? And she says, Venmo. That's the same Venmo you just saw. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, keep going. What do you need help with? Donations. Help yeah. with transportation. Clothes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Come. We need volunteers every single day. We need queers that are commun that our community can trust. So they want other people from the LGBTQIA community to join and support and joshua allen says bet sis i'm coming through with a crew this time wow. we're gonna hold y'all down see you the day after tomorrow mm -hmm. and then of course you saw them together right yep exactly they got together in tj just as advertised right mm -hmm. and who was right there jesse sandoval the woman i told you about that is connected to all these folks from standing rock mm-hmm um, and then Joshua Allen says, I will have a big car in, I will have a big car incoming from San Diego, by the way, if anyone needs a ride into Tijuana with my team, yeah. come on down, come on down. Yeah. The time is right. Mm -hmm. So next here is a post from November 18th. And Bertie Gutierrez is reposted by Veronique Phoenix, the same person posting about the LGBTQ ca okay. uh, caravan. Yeah. And of course, you know, Bertie Gutierrez was the person that we were told by Myron Dewey of Digital Smoke Signals mm -hmm. and uh, David Gaskin 
the uh, native guy that or the native guy that looks white. Yeah. That mm-hmm. was in Mexico um, talking about the caravan. Right. And they talked about the LGBTQ caravan. Mm-hmm. Myron did. Mm-hmm. And they talked about Bertie Gutierrez. And she's the one that's coordinating. She's the one that's helping at the border. Yep. Send her your donations. Check mm-hmm. her out. The caravan is supported by this group, the uh, uh, Asylum Seeker Support Network. But there are other folks. I'm going to show you who they are. Here we go. Here is Veronix Phoenix promoting this um, ICE, uh, Occupy ICE, um, the, against ICE. If you scroll down, you can see it's from it's a post from Occupy ICE, which mm-hmm. I told you. The admin who started this group is none other than Veterans Respond, Veterans Stand with Standing Rock, uh-huh. friend of Michael, I mean, uh, Wesley Clark Jr., mm-hmm. Evan Duke the okay. Third, Evan Duke the wow. Third. He is one of those organizers. He's part of Antifa, who you saw getting all up in the face of uh, protesters at these rallies that we talked about. That were all over this country recently. Mm-hmm. That's what he's been up to. And Veronique Phoenix is also reposting the Occupy ICE. And what is their what is their uh, mantra on there? Well, they're going to push for mass investigations, reduce public support of ICE. They're looking basically picking all of these feathers off of ICE. That's how they're going to abolish it. You know, that's oh, how yeah. they're going to take it apart. Force local governments to act. Target their unions. Disrupt their logistics. Yeah. Target businesses that work with ICE. Blah, 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 blah. Uh-huh. This is what they're promoting in order um, to get rid of ICE. Mm-hmm. Uh, and remember, these people were the same people that were uh, with the veterans that were responsible for putting a Native American woman in a hospital and another one in jail. So they neither cared really for women or protecting women or protecting the sacred or taking care of elderly people or vulnerable people because when they had the opportunity to correct course, they didn't. And they actually put an innocent person, two innocent women in great danger. Since then, many of the people from these groups have put others in danger and have committed crimes against society, violent crimes. That is why I am uh, telling you about this. Up until very recently, Evan Duke, the one that is responsible as the admin for that page that is just shared by Veronique Phoenix, <clears throat> is the former roommate or current possible roommate of Evan Duke, Chelsea Lyons Kent. Oh, yeah. Who was also at Standing Rock and who also committed rape against Carly Hammond, uh, a reporter that was working with Truth Against the Machine that was also raped by Ty Bayless, the cameraman, and uh, reporter Jordan Sheridan who used to also work for TYT. Okay, next we have the um, Diversidad Sin Fronteras poster uh, announcing this event. Um, If you scroll down, it tells you all the different ways in which you can sponsor. So these are all the resources that Pitaya Queen and the LGBTQ caravan have at their disposal. You can help sponsor the parole of a uh, asylum seeker once they cross them into the United States uh, undoc- Ill- illegally. You know, once they um, bring them in through some secretive way, then you are a sponsor for when they get them out of the detention center. And you receive the queer person that is an asylum seeker in your home until their court proceedings. Another way that you can help is by being a professional or personal service sponsor. So, hey, how can you serve these folks? Well, just like they did at Standing Rock, there was a group of lawyers. There was groups Mm -hmm. of medical teams. There were different kinds of um, healing practices like dancing and there all sorts of things. These uh, caravan goers... They're going to have the same thing. Yep. They need doctors, lawyers, therapists, dance, dance teachers, translators, hairdressers, other professionals, uh, anyone that, that's in the queer community that wants to help also to provide safe friendships. They also have temporary sponsors that would be hosting refugees just for a few weeks that would provide a parole letter for a detainee. 
and maintain relationships with that refugee until their court proceeding. Also, there's a commissary sponsor. You want to send money for pizza, tacos, or what have you, Mm -hmm. you could put some money in the commissary. Um, Oh, this is for when they're in detention. Yeah. So that you can put money in their commissary for phone, uh, hygiene products, food, and other necessities. And there is also uh, community support sponsors, which um, include helping um, put together parole packages, support recently released to refugees with transportation, uh, ICE check-ins, English classes, and be available to house refugees. So these are all of the things they have already organized for these folks. Mm -hmm. Go back to that poster for a moment and scroll down even further. Just make sure. Okay, so she says, correct the email where people get a hold of us. So you can see she is very much involved at every level, Oje Pitaya, and the leadership of what the um, Diversidad Sin Fronteras and the groups that are part of the migrant caravan for LGBTQ people Mm -hmm. are doing. Okay? She's at the head of it. The next one here is... Post by Lo que callamos en Tijuana. Again, I'm just showing you all the different places that we're learning about Pitaya Queen, Mm -hmm. learning about her true identity, and who were upset because she misrepresented who she is. That's right. That's the main point. And the, yes, that's the main point. It's, you know, it's, it's not about you know a transgender person changing her name. That's totally, totally, you know, fine, common, and uh, justified. But this person has been saying she's one thing, and she's not that. To try to get the sympathy and the access, you know, to, to something else. And people have noticed, and people have been calling her out, and we felt we needed to call her out because this is. An essential part of what's going on with this caravan and it's tainted at the beginning it's tainted it's planned and you'll see there's a lot more show here you're gonna see where it came from mm-hmm. next I want to show you another reporter I think this one um, Ibrahim is with um, Univision Mexico and he's got his website there where he has a lot more reports you can go watch the video of this interview actually He goes into a building, uh, a hotel, where they are staying in uh, Tijuana. And she becomes agitated and tells him he can't film her in there and tells him to leave her alone and to give her her privacy. Mm -hmm. So you can go watch that if you'd like. It wasn't much of an interview because she didn't really want to talk to him. Yeah. But this is what he says about her it says this person is in nogales and she has a warrant out for her in the united states she's being accused of prostituting minors she is staying at the fray marcos hotel warning they are violent and actually it says they're very violent She says, or it says, the investigation of Pitaya Queen, who's the leader of the uh, group of migrants, can be found here, www.agenciamultimedios.com. Okay? Mm -hmm. Next, I have uh, the video of the LGBTQIA shelter of Tijuana, who, by the way, has previously provided shelter to... Uh, Nikai, um, Pitaya Queen, OJ, um, and an- other migrants from Central America in the past. And this is what they had to say about why they did not stay. This video alleges they decided they weren't going to associate with her because they uh, have learned what she's really doing with the migrant caravan goers in the LGBTQIA caravan and they want no part of it and also they want to call her out for what she is doing. There are subtitles on this one so 
go ahead and uh, take a look. De hecho, en, um, en, uh, al año pasado, cuando vinieron ellos, venían dos chamaquitos, uno de 14, uno de 15, uno era de Guatemala y el otro era de El Salvador. Y este, el, los chavitos tenían relaciones sexuales con las chicas trans mayores de edad, todos chuspeteados los niños y con infecciones en sus partes íntimas de, de que esas chavas tenían ese acercamiento con ellos. Y tenemos evidencia porque los mismos chavos las niñas de 15, 16 años, diciendo que ya tenían allá en Estados Unidos todo arreglado, que las hermanas las iban a esperar en, en Miami, Florida, que ya tenían todo arreglado. Ellos venían con un cuento de hadas cuando se toparon con la triste realidad, que fueron muchos repatriados otra vez a su, a, a su país de origen. Entonces, la verdad, es, es cruel, pero es real de que sí entre ellos mismos existía. Porque esos niños no venían con ningún padre, ningún familiar, es totalmente una mentira. Y la gente que nos conoce, yo tengo un, una, un activismo de 21 años eh, ayudando a la diversidad y lamentablemente nunca se había presentado una situación de este tipo aquí en Tijuana. Lo poco que nosotros llevamos ganado ante la sociedad y ante los grupos de gobierno, las diferentes asociaciones civiles que trabajamos esto, no se nos hace justo que alguien de Centroamérica y que no es centroamericana, porque ella tiene una, un estatus estadounidense, que se haga pasar y a sacarle provecho a ellos, porque es lo que están haciendo. Que no se dejen envolver sobre la nota del amarillismo. Si ustedes quieren contactar y colaborar la información, las puertas y las ventanas del SAR de lo que es la página o las declaraciones del Jardín de las Mariposas, son públicas, aparecen abiertas. Entonces, cualquier persona puede entrar. No se dejen engañar. Las chicas trans que han, han estado aquí en Tijuana, en Jardín de las Mariposas, y que ahorita tienen asilo político, han pasado muchas por aquí y pueden declarar a favor del Jardín de las Mariposas, de Yolanda Rocha, de su servidor Fidel Santi Esteban y Jaime Marín como los responsables de todo lo que ha pasado. Entonces, es muy importante que ustedes hagan hincapié y que se limpie el nombre del jardín, y no nomás del jardín, de la comunidad LGBTI que en Baja California. Que no porque ellos lleguen con esa situación que en su país no sabemos realmente cuál es la situación que están viviendo. Yo he visitado Centroamérica y muchas de las cosas que ellos dicen no es verdad. Yo conozco Salvador, Honduras, Guatemala, Costa Rica. Okay, so um, for those uh, that didn't understand what that was, and, and there were uh, some mistranslations in there because... Okay. Um, uh, that happens, yeah. You know, what, you know what yellow journalism is? Mm -hmm. There used to be accusations of yellow journalism against reporters here in the States a long time ago. Okay. <laughs> Um, but it's, uh, you know, biased, obviously, um, on the, um, against the, uh, progressive values of the LGBTQ, uh, community and, or again, you know, comes from this conservative mindset that, mm -hmm. that has already condemned, um, queer people for being queer or, or trans people for being trans and that anybody that's speaking ill of Pitaya Queen or investigating her um, are uh, are simply transphobic, homophobic, racist, uh, xenophobic, anti-immigrant, um, whatever. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the things they mistranslated because he said, don't allow the, um, the claims that um, talking about Pitaya Queen it means that the the, the news is biased um uh, and and uh and homophobic or uh, or anti trans that is not the case and in fact if anybody wants to come and ask us and he gives the names of every single one of the people that are the directors of that particular shelter for uh queer people and trans people okay you can we have our, she's, he says we, our doors and windows are open we are fully transparent we are willing to speak on the record we we are willing to uh give you all the details uh, of what happened you can come in and question us we have you know this is what we know so they're ready to talk and i i will tell you i did reach out to one of the people on that panel and they did agree to talk to me although i have not been able to secure that interview 
yet. So here's what it said in the video. The man that was speaking um, said that uh, there was, in the past, the, one of the reasons that they're not having them stay anymore is that in the past, a Pitaya queen um, brought um, unaccompanied minors um, and that on one occasion last year, there was a 14-year-old and a 15-year-old and they realized, they found out over time that those boys were, were that those kids were having sex with the adult trans girls. Really? Trans women. Wow. And that they had infections in their intimate parts and, and that devel they developed infections in their mouth and in their intimate parts. That's why they were able to um, surmise uh, in addition to the fact that um, they, you know, heard from the, the kids themselves what was going on. They, they were able to see the evidence of the infections that resulted from the sexual contact, as well as saying that these kids were coached. They were told that they were going to be offered jobs and that they were going to have um, sponsorships and homes in Miami, in uh, the United States. So they had this pipe dream in mind. And when the shelter, the Cardin de Mariposas, which specializes in helping migrants who are trying to seek asylum, queer people specifically, they did not want the help of the people and the staff at that place because Pitaya Queen had promised them this other pipe dream and sadly she said he said uh, she did not deliver in the majority of the cases the only thing that happened was that the kids were exploited sexually trafficked prostituted sexually and then deported back to their home countries they further said that you know they don't think that it is right for you know the little gains that have been made by the queer and, and trans community in, in Tijuana are being destroyed by the likes of someone passing themselves off as a migrant refugee from Central America, which they're not. And, you know, Columbusing in, the, in, in an essence, because she's really from the United States, uh, Columbusing into Mexico and putting their values and their uh, way of doing things in front of the work and, and taking up resources that could be going to organizations that are local, that are there dealing with that issue every day, that live there. No, instead, we've got Pitaya with all of her connections back to the United States, back to Harvard, back to all these organizations who comes in and says, we're going to do it my way now. Fortunately, though, unfortunately, though, it's already led to the death of one queer woman in the custody of United States uh, detention. And uh, apparently there are allegations of trafficking of children that seem like they come from credible sources. Also, let me show you. This is um, the interview that I wanted to share with you. Um, it's a little bit longer, but it's important. And I want you to see for yourself that she did give this interview. Uh, in this interview, what is very important for you to note is that she's already been called out in the media at this point. This is the interview she just gave a few days ago. She's she's already been you know exposed uh, as being a Harvard middle class, well connected, non refugee. Mm -hmm. Has she hasn't had a hard day uh, like the caravan goers or like the people that actually are fleeing violence. And, and death in Honduras. She hasn't had a day like that in her life, but she has pretended that she hasn't. So now she's having to respond to the allegations of angry people as to why she did that. And she's just deflecting completely and going, I've been transparent the whole time. If you want to go back and look, I've been telling people exactly what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. And everybody knows where I'm coming from. And uh, and I'm going to go back and look through social media to see what we could find to show you that she really hasn't exactly been very clear to people about her background. She hasn't been telling everyone what her connections are to power, to influence in the United States, to politics, to Hollywood. She hasn't told anybody the connections that she has to media, to money, none of that to organizers. Um there is a little bit of evidence of the fact that she has been doing some work to try to get people that are from the LGBTQIA community into the United States seeking asylum. 
but not much. And uh, here is her interview with Info Gales. Buenas tardes, ¿cuál es tu nombre? Mi nombre es Ana Ok, muy bien. Eh, vienes con este grupo de eh, migrantes centroamericanos. Tú eres, tú eres mexicana. Yo soy mexicana y estadounidense. México estadounidense. Muy bien. ¿Cuál es la situación eh, que se está dando? Llegan ayer, es una caravana que no esperábamos aquí en Nogales. Uh -huh. Pero, ¿cómo es que llegan a Nogales? Platícanos. Sí, bueno, es toda una estrategia legal. Nosotros no trabajamos, yo no trabajo sola. Mucha gente piensa que yo soy la del líder de uh -huh. este movimiento, pero no. Nosotros trabajamos con varias organizaciones estadounidenses, abogados estadounidenses, en los cuales... Realizamos estrategias legales para mejor, para tratar de evitar que, es, que continúe el riesgo para las personas LGBT migrantes. Uh -huh. Entonces, cuando estábamos en Tijuana, como muchas personas se habrán dado cuenta, hubo muchos, uh, muchas riñas con los vecinos, con las personas locales tijuanenses que se creían, la falsa información que circulaba por las redes sociales, que éramos, que éramos ladrones, que yo era traficante de personas. ¿no? Quiero que entienda la gente que yo he hecho este trabajo desde 2015, no es la primera vez que yo hago, que yo monitoreo y viajo con personas LGBT y ahorita hubo mucho tiempo haciéndolo cuando ellos dicen que yo soy traficante de personas o traficante de o que los voy a explotar sexualmente no solamente están este, creando mentiras que me afectan a mí sino están diciendo que el gobierno de Estados Unidos ha mentido uh -huh. porque el, en las caravanas pasadas nosotros hemos puesto personas LGBT con patrocinadores estadounidenses que el gobierno de Estados Unidos uh -huh. decidió dejarlas salir a vivir con esas personas oye te tocaste un tema importantísimo la situación de vulnerabilidad uh -huh. de las personas LGBT uh -huh. y en situación de migración ¿A qué se expone? Digo, el ser migrante ya te expone a muchas cosas, uh -huh. pero el ser migrante LGBT, ¿a qué te expone? Bueno, pues te expone a la violencia, no solamente del Estado, violencia donde básicamente migración está tratando de detener y cazar a cuantos más migrantes. Si to ok. No, I didn't let the whole thing run. I just wanted to show you the interview. It's pretty long. But I wanted you to at least hear the part where she says, I've been doing this since 2015. And she's responding about her transparency, about her history, being Mexican-American, uh, educated student from Harvard, all of the stuff that she's been accused of concealing. She says she's been making those things publicly known since 2015 in Mexico. I couldn't find a single, not even one article where or interview where she explicitly talks about her background in the way that she claims that she did here. If you have one, send it my way. If any of you have evidence of what she claims, please let me know. I couldn't find it. I think that she just made that up and that she will even say at some point that what she meant by that is that she's never hidden the fact that she's a trans woman. At least since 2015, she's been living openly that way. So did you notice also, you can go back and play this over and over again for yourself so you can hear when he asks her name at the very beginning of the interview, mm -hmm. the, she says, uh, Nikai. Nikai. So it says like, Anna K. Mm -hmm. Anna Kai. She says, Anna Kai. Flot. She pronounces the last name Flot. I don't know if it's supposed to be flote or flot, but she pronounces it flot. So I'm assuming that's how it's pronounced. Um, what do we got next, Duke? Uh, Regen Regeneración Michoacán posted about her as well. Look at all of the different people that were upset in different states, in different places where she's been, that had no idea that she was a doctoral fellow from Harvard living in Mexico and throughout Central America and that she was headed heading up these migrant caravans. Next, you can see for yourself that she did, definitely did go to Harvard. This is her talking about um, her time in the... Um, you know, in, in her education, she says, after eight months of living day to day in a small shared studio apartment, I received the news. I was admitted into both the Harvard and Princeton anthropology PhD programs, as well as the medical anthropology program at Berkeley. The journey to graduate school has been my most challenging and impactful career choice. I opted for the Harvard anthropology program because it offered the most freedom in developing unique and ethical conscious research projects. 
in a university where there are fewer than five indigenous doctoral students and not one native faculty, it became difficult to make sense of the direction and goal of your work. I was fortunate to find a space at Harvard University Native American program where I was welcomed the first week of my graduate career. I have since forged the relationship relationships with the program's director, staff, and other students. Hmm. Here is a post about the graduate school. He, she says, it's still a challenge, however. Reflecting back, I've come to realize my success has been supported by individuals and programs that accept my personal identity, understand the difficulties I have faced, and encourage my intellectual interests, which often don't fit the standard university mold. I am currently reaching the long history of security collaboration and intelligence sharing between the United States and Mexico. Notice the emphasis. Mm -hmm. A relationship created to detain and deport Central American refugees. In this research, I will explore indigenous identities in the hopes of bringing a better understanding of our histories and our presence today. Immigration, refugees, security and intelligence collaborations between the U.S. and Mexico, all of those things are being put into practice in what she is currently doing with these caravans. Hmm. You see that? Oh, yeah. Wow. Here's the book cover of the, um, you know, excerpts that I took. It comes from Indigenizing Programs for Native American Student Success. And here is the profile, the current profile of Pitaya Queen or O.J. Pitaya, as she recently changed it into. And next, I have the Harvard Talk post from 2016. You know, I was looking for evidence of the fact, articles, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. There was a post. So unless you knew that she went by the name of Pitaya Queen and not Anakai Flot, like she just told that reporter... Mm -hmm. <laughs> then it would be very difficult for you to find this public post where she talks about how she's a, st a student or that she's at ha uh, Harvard. Otherwise, there's really no way to tell going back that far. And this is not a post from 2015. It's from 2016. But it does mention Harvard. Come through, Harvard peeps. I'll be presenting two spirit peoples at the front lines from settler warfare to the black snake. Oh. This is during Standing Rock. Yeah, it is. With the Lee Ochmook and Candy Brings Plenty. Hmm. Hmm. That's some Standing Rock people right there. Yep, definitely. I'm going to show you all her connections to Standing Rock. Next, we have, for those of you who aren't <laughs> sure, we have more. This is a video uh, of her with a migrant caravan from last year, from 2017. Here's a clip of her with the people she was bringing in 2017. Este próximo 20 de julio, más de 15 jóvenes migrantes de la comunidad LGBTI partiremos en caravana a la frontera de México y Estados Unidos pidiendo asilo político ya que es nuestro lugar de origen. Nos discriminan por nuestra identidad de género. Este próximo 20 de julio, más de 15 jóvenes migrantes de la comunidad LGBTI partiremos en caravana a la frontera de México y Estados Unidos pidiendo asilo político ya que es nuestro lugar de origen. Nos discriminan por nuestra identidad de género y sexualidad. En nuestra estancia en México hemos sido agredidas. Ya, ya basta. basta. Deseamos que nuestro llamado se haya escuchado. Con un granito de arena que aportes, estarás apoyándonos a ser libres en el camino y felices en el destino. ¡Que tiemble! ¡Que tiemble! ¡Que tiemble migración! ¡América unida, una casa sin nación! ¡Que tiemble! ¡Que tiemble! ¡Que tiemble los machistas! ¡América unida será transfeminista! Anahuacas sin fronteras. Okay. Anahuac is Mexico. Anahuac is the our our land base, right? 
Anahuac represents where we come from. So it, it it's kind of like saying in Nahuatl the the women of Turtle Island. Okay. <laughs> or the women of our the First Nations women. And this is what the group was was being promoted that she was being pro- uh, promoted in last year. That's not 2015 that people saw her openly doing this work and promoting it. That's from 2017, folks. Here's one from 2015. This is one of the earliest things I could find that she was associated with. You can see that she created this GoFundMe, Nakai Flot from Austin, Texas, to raise $1,000 for these two uh, trans women, one of whom is called Richard and the other one of whom is Paola. You scroll down, you see that it tells their story, okay? And they came from San Pedro Sula. This is the same exact location in Honduras where the current migrant caravan said they started back in October. Hmm. Okay? Next, I will show you another February 15 post, or excuse me. Yeah, it should be a 15, 15 February 15 post. That says, meet Paola, February 15th. Oh, you're skipping something. Go okay. fund me. All right. Do you see that? No, you you, you went back to, you, honey. No. We just saw this one. Meet Paola. That's, uh, that's right. That's right. That's the right one. I'm sorry. Yeah. It says right there, meet Paola. And then he tells the story about Paola, the woman that was in the GoFundMe, one of the women in that GoFundMe. And he says, GoFundMe, please donate. Scroll down. It tells a very sad story about how this woman was fleeing the Maras, the MS-8, MS-13, that, that they were coerced into the sex industry, forced to consume and sell cocaine and marijuana and other street drugs, assaulted and forcefully abused. They were all, you know, and the stories uh, about what happens to these women that, that they tell on their route in interviews that I've seen, um, is they're horrific. The question I have is, are some of them made up just to seek asylum? I don't know. I've known that I've known these people to be capable of <coughs> fabricating stories for show, mm-hmm. completely fabricating stories for their own ends. So here is another, that's uh, one for Richard, okay? Please donate to Richard. Yeah. Richard is the other person that you saw in that GoFundMe, okay? This is from 2015, and she doesn't make any mention really of being the person down there bringing them, of this being a caravan Mm -hmm. or anything like that. It's just donate to these people. They need help. Yeah. They're in danger. Next, we have another one from August, and it says, please donate. Now, this one talks about being on the road, and they are afraid of being going through checkpoints and experience seeing state-authorized violence. Um, they want money for shelter, food, and transport. And as you can see, <coughs> if you scroll down, this is so that they can migrate safely. And it was a video, which I'm not going to share with you. I'm sure it's still available online. This is says right down there. If you donate, guess who's going to get some uh, donate some uh, crafts made by Paula and Richard. Oh yeah. You, if you donate, you Mm -hmm. get some crafts for helping them. Mm -hmm. So next, it she posted in 2015 about. The legacy of sex workers. It says seven famous people you didn't realize were sex workers from high class rent rent boys to border strippers. Here are seven awesome. And then it, it's uh, listed under unicornbooty.com. Hmm. And that's something that she posted publicly. Here's another post that she made back in 2016 during Standing Rock about Winona LaDuke. You know who else went to Harvard? 
Winona LaDuc. Yes, she did. There's a connection to Harvard there, too. Mm-hmm. This was, fo- of course, posted by Sacred Stone Camp, which is associated with LaDonna. Oh, yeah. Mama LaDonna. <coughs> so there's that post about Winona. Here's another one. This one is from the interview for um, she did with Democracy Now! right after the dog attack in okay. September. And Pitaya Queen is posting this on her page. Fossil wow. fuel industry equals violence and abuse. So Pitaya came out of the same movement for indigenous rights and resources as the people of Standing Rock. Mm-hmm. She echoes the same kind of, uh, you know, they talk the same talk, the same talking points, like an echo chamber. Here's another post. I wanted to show you when I went to Pitaya Queen's Facebook page, I was almost floored when I realized I had six friends in common with her. Yeah. I was like, what? <laughs> How the hell do I have six friends <clears throat> in common with someone I've never even heard of that's supposedly a refugee from Central America? Mm-hmm. It turns out she's got a lot of friends in her places. Yeah. Um, I won't tell you who they are, but there's three people on this mutuals list that are um organizers Mm -hmm. like known organizers in the organizing world as is winona leduc exactly as also she is known as an executive director for honor the earth Mm -hmm. she's also the fiscal agent for fresh it yeah and she was very instrumental out at standing rock now she may also get involved in all of the stuff that's going on at the border. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't be surprised. And so here's another post. because Obviously, they know each other. Pitaya is reposting her. They both went to the same school. Mm-hmm. Here she's posting about uh, a guy named Hockenberry, who is associated with one of the founders and or leaders of Diversidad Sin Fronteras, the, the nonprofit organization for queer people that she has been posting, um, that, that's been posting uh, for Pitaya and the LGBTQ caravan right now. Mm-hmm. And she says, hello, friends. For the past three months, I've been working with my dear friend, Hockenberry, in developing a research campaign project with the simultaneous goal of enriching limited existing, lim- excuse me, can you read that? Limiting existing data regarding the LGBTI plus refugee Assault while pragmatically assisting those communities with transition funds. Diversidadinfronteras.com. The site now holds 16 cases of queer refugees that have allowed us to share their story. We have maintained a detailed record of over 40 LGBTI plus and other refugees currently crossing, traveling, or awaiting political asylum. Please follow, and there's a website there, to watch a video we have created with the beautiful communities of La 72 Hogar Refi- Refugio. Refugio para Personas Migrantes, the, the migrant refuge of the town of Tenosique. Tenosique, Tabasco. Please share widely so that we can reach our $10,000 goal by the end of the month. Yep. I found that post. Yeah. And it's about helping migrants, right? Mm-hmm. And then it's in Spanish. Yeah. And next, here's a post from said Hockenberry that she claims is her friend. Okay. And he says, and I'll just read what it says in English. Okay. I would like to clarify that I do not work, nor do I collaborate with Roberto Nakai Flot Jr. Wow. Oh. A.K.A. Pitaya Queen. She is this trans imperialist woman. Yeah. Huh. This is the, the person that created Diversidad Sin Fronteras, okay. Diversity Without Borders. Right. This is one of the creators of that group. And he's saying she Columbus. Pitaya Queen is nothing more than a trans imperialist woman who stole the collective Diversity Without Borders in Mexico City. She stole the collective. She came there. She columbused all over Mexicans and their groups, stole their Diversity Without Borders group to support the migrant community by pretending that the initiative is gringo. It means that she, by pretending, by saying to people in Mexico that Diversidad Sin Fronteras isn't 
a Mexican organization started by Mexican queer people for Mexicans. No, it was started by Americans. <laughs> it is funded by and supported by and started by Americans, a.k.a. her. And that that is a lie. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. That it is a gringo initiative, which it is not. She has diverted funds that we had received to support the migrant LGBTI community and has plagiarized my work. She is a thief. She has plagiarized my work, my photos, and my videos pretending that they are hers. Nikai Flote and uh, in this caravan, to this caravan, has discriminated against more than half of its contingent of LGBTIQ people, and we demand justice. Wow. We, the real people, the LGBTQ community of Mexico, the people that had been doing that work, they want justice. Do you notice how she had no problem name dropping somebody that everyone recognizes is behind the organization in Mexico, yeah. Universidad Sin Fronteras, to give herself props to appear to be associated with someone who will not even acknowledge Pitaya hmm. as wow. a friend. Wow. She just called her out. Mm -hmm. So let's see what else we can find. Well, let's hear. Here's a post from February, of, I mean, from April of 2017 from Facebook of Diversidad Sin Fronteras, the platform that Pitaya Queen stole from Mexicans, mm -hmm. posting a day of union and, and fun with the, com with the migrant LGBTQIA community. Again, these, this post shows Nikai Flote float with the migrant LGBTQIA group. Looks like they're having a pretty good time. Mm -hmm. And it, what looks like a nice uh, cascade or river um, yep. swimming in the water. Mm -hmm. And she is there with them, traveling with the with this LGBTQIA migrants. migrants. But it's from 2017, not from 2015. Yep. Again, in that interview, she says, in response to the questions about why she's been keeping all these things secret, she's been open about all of her background and everything she's done since 2015. I think there's a lot of other people that disagree with that, though. And I've showed you the evidence of what they've had to say. Yeah. It's not just one person. It's multiple people. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then here's a post, another one from 2017, and it says, as some of you already know. <clears throat> can you read this one? As some of you already know, Diversity, Diversity Ads and Frontera does not receive any funds from anyone. We rely on our own money and the kind of donations you make. <laughs> Almost every day we cook with the community and help provide food for about 10 members of the LGBT community that have no employment or place to live. This time we need $200 to house five people, three trans women, and two gay men. We are, we are full in our house and need some support to pay rent and buy food for them for the week. Finding jobs here has been uh, trans and undocumented is particularly impossible. Some com commu community do have sex work but those jobs are limited and very dangerous. Here are two trans girls, one of them a minor, asking you to urgently help them. Please listen to us. Comment below or instructions or message. And then it includes some letters that the uh, queer um, migrant people and trans people uh, drew up and wrote up mm -hmm. to basically request support. Yeah. And thank people that are donating and supporting mm -hmm. their trip. <clears throat> she claims they don't receive any funds yeah. from anyone except the great donors. Yeah. I think she's got a lot of other support Yeah, I think from so many too. other organizations. Because I just don't see any other way that you could be renting an Airbnb. I don't see any other way that you could have the accommodations these people have managed to get. Mm -hmm. Unless you got help. Yeah. And they, let me tell you. The people that organize Standing Rock have got a lot of help, a lot of support. Okay, here we go. Um, this is a post from, from Sara Araiza, and they're in Nogales, Arizona. And this post is tagged with Movimiento Cosecha. Movimiento Cosecha, okay? Okay. 
So here is uh, next um, Cosecha, California post. Can you read that? Support learn. network. Support. Bringing the hands. Bringing the serve. hands to serve. It says, and this is Cosecha from California. You can see this is posted in 2018 on November 20th, right? Yes. What does it say We're building Cosecha, a... California is doing? Mm -hmm. We're working toward developing support. No, right at the very top. What We're does building it say a doing? caravan of support. They are building it. Mm -hmm. They are building a caravan of support. There's a migrant caravan, but there's also a support caravan. I see. Okay. And they're going to build it. What does it do? We are working towards developing support bases throughout the border cities with the U.S. and Mexico to develop leadership, community, and organize a massive group of people ready to welcome the caravan with radical love while fostering a culture of resistance. It is a time to sacrifice, a time to harvest resistance, love, and reciprocity. Want to get involved? We are currently fundraising to bring resources to the caravan. And then they have a, a bit.ly link for you to go to. So, I went to the uh, Migrante Cosecha, excuse me, Movimiento Cosecha page. Mm -hmm. And looked at the likes. To look at what is this organization, who is this organization in California? What are they? What are they mm -hmm. about? And I had a surprising number of friends that I know that like this page. This is just one of the um, pages of people on my friends list that like this page. And I thought, why, that's interesting that these folks, many of whom, again, are organizers, mm -hmm. um, are familiar with this organization and know it because... Many of them are from the Midwest, and so I'm surprised that they would know and wow. have association with the California mm -hmm. uh, nonprofit that I had never really heard of. Have exactly. you heard of it before? No, I have not at all. Okay. Well, you've been an organizer for 25 years, right? Yep. And you know, you've heard of organizations all over the country, haven't mm -hmm. you? I sure have, and I and I recognize some of the names on this. I know you do. List. You and know I'm which like, one I recognize? Well, uh, yes, I know of two that you recognize. Probably <laughs> yeah. three. Well, Susana de Leon is one that stands out to me because she happens to be none other than Bruce Nestor's wife. Mm -hmm. The lawyer that was working on cases with the WPLC yep. for water protectors mm -hmm. at Standing Rock. Mm -hmm. Next, we have... It's a long video. I don't know if you can play the whole thing. Uh, well, here is a video by Movimiento Cosecha. It's in. It's it's interesting. I think you should hear what they're out there doing. But let me just tell you first what you're going to see. Um, the people in Mexico continue to ask who organized the caravan, who promised these people they were going to get asylum, who brought them in the route that they did without consulting anyone in Mexico, putting all of the onus of supporting and um, coming up with the resources to help these folks while they cross Mexico. But again, without the consultation of any of the states or municipalities through which they decided, someone decided, not Mexicans or Mexico, that the caravan would come through. And again, it is disrespectful and it is um, exploitative and it is hella entitled for organizers from the United States to think we're going to do it this way and it's going to happen in Mexico this way, whether or not Mexico likes it or wants it or even knows about it. We're not going to ask for, 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 for uh, permission. We'll ask for forgiveness later instead. Oh, yeah. That is what. Um, and now they've got all of these different organizations and groups which are associated with the folks from Standing Rock that are down there doing media work and they're selling the narrative that anybody that is against this, they're xenophobic, they're racist, and they just don't like migrants. Here's a clip. Here are clips from that video. Take a listen. Got a queue up.
So right now, the Tijuana police are getting water bottles given. Only the Tijuana police are receiving water bottles, and a couple of them are giving their water bottles away to the refugee children, which is wonderful. saying that your friend got stopped bringing donations here to Mexico? Correct. Oh. Yeah, so I don't know. I don't know. They're trying to do the tinted windows. So that they can't see what, what's in the back of their car, you know. But you just said that your friend was stopped bringing donations here Correct. at their first attempt. <laughs> what were they asked? Do you have any idea? No, I just know that they were turned around because they knew. They, I guess they kind of knew what they were trying to bring down. Hmm. So apparently. Um, ally volunteers driving in donations are being turned around by Mexican Border Patrol if they know that you are actively bringing donations to the Mexican side. <laughs> So another amazing account to follow is Renegade Media. And we have... Yeah. So we have some Mexican nationalists as well creating their live streams. So just a... Uh, a word of caution for everyone, please be cautious of the medias out there and what you're following and what you're sharing. Televisa here. Again, people are just tired. So as you can see, Talking about how we're trying to create international pressure to get Trump to change the opinion. Donald Trump did some things, but the last time, in the caravan, the 80% of the people, the women and the children who had really a state of asylum passed. Apparently, the last caravan of the women and children on the asylum side were able to pass. Because as long as there is some type of pressure, at least the people who have the possibility of asylum will do it, and the ones who do not, the problem is what to do with those who have the opportunity to apply for asylum. Yes, because they have no one who has been deported or deported. Who has been deported? Who has been deported? Pues ustedes, o sea, nosotros los trajimos, ellos salieron desde Honduras, era un nexo. Sí. ¿Quién los animó? ¿Quién los animó? Yo te pregunto a ti. Donald Trump. Donald Trump los animó. 
Ah, caray, él les dijo que vinieran. ¿Quién, quién dijo, quién empezó con sus tweets so, a hacerlo público? ¿Quién, ¿Quién le dio toda la publicidad? He's angry y, at the a ver, Donald Trump nos animó a venir para acá y ahora nos va a dejar con los tweets. Ajá. ¿Qué hizo los tweets? Out here. No, He's pues saying, you brought them out here. Con los tweets, and no the speaker in front of us is saying, Donald Trump brought them here. U.S. intervention in Central America has pressured the Exodus Refuge might Exodus to come out here. For example, he él piensa, no, 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 te estoy él piensa no, yo, yo de, a lo mejor la pregunta, yo digo que Peña Nieto lo último que quería es esto, lo mismo que el gobierno de, de este. Esto pasó, y lo que yo sé, era cuando 500 personas decidieron salir. Lo único que ha hecho esto, lo que ha incitado esto, es la violencia. La ruta de la muerte que ha estado a ver, en México. Vamos por parte. A ver, escúchame, sí. pues. Voy no, no, a terminar. Yo sí quiero, que, quiero que hablar el tema de que aprobaron el fraude. Vamos por partes. Tú dices que, que los tweets de Trump los animan a venir. Y ahora Trump no lo deja entrar. ¿Qué gana él con eso? Pues obviamente su electorado, las elecciones, el Congreso le favoreció. Asked, todo eso lo utiliza. Maneja las redes de una manera muy, muy bien. O sea, cada vez que él avienta un tweet, ¿cuántos reporteros están listos para cubrirlo? Y eso que genera a más personas que vengan a la, a la situación. O sea, pero no nada más es eso, no es un elemento de cosas. La violencia en su país. Ok, so I wanted to show you that because I'm, I'm trying to educate you into seeing or hearing what the rhetoric that is coming out of these uh, platforms sounds like. And what it is, uh, is, it sounds very familiar to me from what I heard at Standing Rock. And it's a couple of things. One, be careful what media you listen to. There is some media out there that is not, I guess, trustworthy in her in her opinion. Um, there's some media out there that's not going to tell you the truth. There's some media that they want you not to listen to. They want to make sure that all of the media sources you're listening to are carrying the propaganda and the message they want. And she tells you, You know who a good person is to follow? Renegade Media. Yeah, that's, that's another right. good channel to mm -hmm, listen to. Mm -hmm. Where did we hear of Renegade Media? Uh, Standing Rock. Totally. In fact, this was a Renegade Media video that was posted on their page that they actually removed. <clears throat> yeah, this video is no longer it's available. Not available. No, there was that was another one. That's a different one. The one where they're at night. That's oh, the okay. one that got removed. Oh, okay, yes. That's yeah, and, and they selectively they do selectively remove media. But they also also selectively translate what is convenient for them, and they don't translate what is inconvenient. Yeah. And by the way, that guy that the media was talking to and asking questions to was not doing well under media interrogation. So you know what they did? They brought in some other guy who came in who sounded like he had pneumonia or something. He's really hoarse. Hmm. And he talks and talks and talks and talks. And he goes on and on and on. He ups the ante because unlike this guy that is being questioned that, you know, uh, is sticking to his talking points, but which the reporters are not reacting well to because of what he's saying, they bring in this other guy who is able to capture the, um, I guess, rip the heart rip, pull at the heartstrings of the reporters more easily because he starts to say things like, um, um, You know, many of us are sick, like me. I have mm. a, a really bad a chest uh, cold. Um, many of us are, are sick like that, but you don't care about that. All you want to report on is how dirty we are and how dirty we left the last place that we were at. Many of us have died on the on route. And I'm like, what? I didn't know about that. Did you yeah. hear there was a bunch no. of people that died on route? No, I haven't heard that at all. Children even, he says. I'm like, holy crap. Wow. I hadn't heard of any of this. I have no idea that there were so many people that were dying that I had not heard a single media source out of Mexico or in the United States report yet. None. But he was revealing all this stuff and people were going like, really? What? Who? What happened? Um, so uh, he got more, he was more emotionally amped up and it, it did seem that the uh, journalists that were standing around him weren't as willing to pick him apart although i i do suspect that he upped the theatrics because 
it's what it was what was called for to, to kind of um, quiet those people down. And during that part where this new person steps in and starts talking, she translated much better than she did for this guy. So I'm going to tell you what he said. Um, but again, I wanted you to notice that she recommends certain people that you should listen to. And that means you're not supposed to listen to other people and their messages. They asked that guy that was being interviewed, who organized this? Who caused the people in the caravan to come in this fashion, in this route, on this way? Um, and, and, and he says, Trump. And he's like, how? Wait yeah. a minute. How, how did Trump organize this? How did he get the, the, the caravan going? Well, he stumbled. I, I, um, how, when did he do that? How did he do that? Well, you know, he was, t he was the one giving them all of the attention at his rallies. He was the one that kept talking about the caravan and putting them on, on social media. So you're saying, hold on a minute, says the reporter. So you're trying to tell me that Trump's tweets and comments are supposedly to be held responsible for the caravan's creation. And you can tell that their incredulity at what he just said and looking at him like, are you kidding me right now? And he just stumbles on that. He doesn't know what to do. So he's like, well, well, yeah, I mean, it's what is responsible for making these people. And then he pivots real quick and it says, he says, it's not just Trump. It's the violence in the country. He like, Oh, he remembers his talking points. Yeah. Yeah. It's the violence in the country. It's the poverty. It's the instability. It's the guy they put into the dictatorship, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> And then he, uh, they ask him, we've heard some people saying that they're going to rush the border, that they're going to um, cause a, a, a violent clash like they did today, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And they heard them talking about it and they said, uh, what do you say about this? And the guy said, M most people won't do that. Most people are responsible. Most people know um, that they don't want to, to get people hurt. And he asked, the reporter asked, who was responsible for getting everyone out of the shelters at night and going and putting them right there in front of the pass, you know, in the garita, the one that video at night that you were talking about. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> he says that he doesn't, you know, he doesn't really know who did that. And he, they said, well, who brought all of the migrant caravan to Tijuana? Who decided... Tijuana was the spot. Why Tijuana? Why two, th you know, th this m number of them? Why thousands of them at once? Who did who did that? Why this city? And they go, I don't know. Maybe because people like this city. It's a big city. It's a nice city. <laughs> I can't. I don't know. <laughs> the reporter says, we've heard from a variety of people and we've seen, we videotape from other places where these, you know, organizers are talking to the crowds. They were told to give fake names when they crossed into Mexico. They were told to conceal their identities. They were told to conceal their identities from the Mexican authorities. Why were they told that? Why are organizers in your caravan telling people that? And he started coming up with this thing about how some of these people that are seeking asylum, they fear for their lives because there are people that like legit legitimately want to kill them and giving their real names and telling you like, here I am would put them in danger of being killed. And yet the same people in the organizing of this caravan are letting these caravan goers walk in broad daylight, identify their location, go on social media and go in front of television cameras almost daily since they started out of uh, Guatemala. So I, it, I think that it's uh, definitely uh, a contradiction at, at very best and an outright um, red herring at worst. I also told you explicitly why they had to go to Tijuana because that does not make sense to any Mexican. Everyone in Mexico is asking that question repeatedly. Why Tijuana? It doesn't make sense. It's not the normal crossing route for mi migrants. It's not the shortest route. It's not the safest route. It is none of those things, and yet everyone is going that route. Why? Somebody in the United States chose it, 
And I told you, it's for the convenience of the Hollywood people. Mm -hmm. It's for the convenience of the California organizers. That's where they have their base. They needed the... They're too lazy to do the real work of helping real migrants, real refugees, real asylum seekers. They manufactured them at their convenience and they brought them to the border that most suited them. That's why they're there. But of course, the caravan can't tell you that. Mm -hmm. They can't tell you that they have wealthy Hollywood supporters that are going to be there to film when they rush the... Yeah. The border and make a documentary out of it and bring mm -hmm. their drones from Standing Rock exactly. and bring drums from Standing Rock and turn it into a camp, like a refugee camp, but Standing Rock styles and bring teepees and mm -hmm. Indians to it mm -hmm. and bring actors and celebrities that are there. They're going to be like Shailene Woodley are going to be there to clutch their pearls and ask your, for your donations. Mm -hmm. They're not going to tell you that because then you wouldn't care. Um. And uh, she goes on, or this um, reporter goes on to ask, um, Sin Fronteras org members, are, spe are they speaking on their, um, are also speaking on their own behalf or behalf of the, on behalf of the caravan? That's another group to keep in mind, the Sin Fronteras group. You have Diversidad Sin Fronteras, and then you have Sin Front this other Sin Fronteras group, Migrantes Sin Fronteras, Migrants Without Borders. And then, of course, you have Diversity Without Borders. Mexico ha is offering these folks asylum. One reporter asks, do you want asylum in Mexico? Are you really fleeing from fear such that in and is your life in so much danger that you will take asylum anywhere that you can get it? Or are you shopping for asylum? And the answer was that, you know, some will ask for asylum in Mexico and others will seek asylum in the United States because that's where they're they're more comfortable requesting asylum. Um, I think the vast majority of them are going to try to seek asylum in the United States and that this was orchestrated in such a way that hmm. that's the, that was the end goal from the beginning. I don't think many, if any, will seek asylum in Mexico. Um, they were talking about how the little resources that Mexico has and they were asking uh, don't you think that it's a little entitled of the migrant caravan to demand so much from a country that is so poor in resources to give even its own citizens mm -hmm. you know when, when, when we have people that are homeless and hungry right here in our si inside of our city gates what makes you think that you can make demands on behalf of the caravan that we can't even provide for our own citizens? Um, and also, they were asking about the business district, which has been severely affected by the number of protesters that are there and everything that is going on. And of course, they kept asking repeatedly. He didn't have good answers for any of that. That's oh, yeah. why they switched him out. They kept asking over and over again, what caused, who organized, what made this exodus, this uh, mass exodus happen? And they, that guy uh, was always repeating fear, hunger, violence. Uh, another thing that they kept repeating over and over again is they are having no leader. Oh, there okay. are no leaders. There are no organizers. There, nobody is leading anything. Yeah, It's all decentralized. Hmm. Yeah. So I wanted to go to Caravan uh, the Diversidad Press number one caravan. Right. This is uh, Diversidad de Sin Fronteras post about the trans gay migrant caravan from 2017 not 2015 and it's talking about th being the first you see that yep. primera caravana trans gay migrante it's the first trans gay caravan so if she's been migrating people in caravans since 2015 why does this one with the organization that she's with say that the one in 2017 was the first one mm -hmm. that's my question next here's one that is posted in 2017 it says that since 
Diversidad uh, Without Borders has traveled to um, bring queer migrant communities 10 times. Mm -hmm. This is in 2017. Not in caravans. It just says that they've traveled 10 times to get members with members of the of the migrant queer community. They have been traveling, leaving Tenosique, which is in Tabasco, as you know. And um, they're posting pictures of a person that is now waiting to be reunited with relatives. Next, we have a post from one of um, the transgender uh, friends of Nikai Flot, who is Kwakwatsli Siwatl. And she says, my roomie Roberto Nakai Flot, always so elegant looking. My roomie. Mm -hmm. So, you know, roomie means like my... Somebody that you roomed with, right? Yep, yep. Whether they were roommates or just traveled together, maybe. Mm -hmm. I know that um, Siwat actually has traveled and spent time with Nakai Flot. Here's the next one. Uh, one of her posts. This one is recent. As you can see, this one is from this year, this month, mm -hmm. just last week. Yep. And it says... I'm tired, but I'm happy. In a few hours, I will be with my North American family. Hmm. And if you scroll down, I believe, uh, see what this for Mexico City. If you scroll down, someone asks her, where are you going? Um, if it's where I think you're, I, if, I, if it's where I think it is, then how great and beautiful um have a good trip and she says yes that is where i am going keep scrolling and then tete maya says to monterey question mark hmm. and she says nope texas uh. but texas for me is just being like being in mexico that's why i call it the north so, she traveled to Texas. Next, we have one from No Borders, uh, a post about No Borders by Pitaya Queen from 2017, where she says, support our trans gay caravan again. She's calling it a caravan for the first time in yeah. 2017. There was nothing mentioning caravans before. Mm -hmm. She says, no mas fronteras, no more borders, trans us trans are free to travel and then she has a plum fund hmm. next we have in scene three the plum fund for caravana pueblo diversidad which is the refugee caravan of 2018 okay and then um we have the diversidad trans leaders post from facebook diversidad sin fronteras posted members of the first trans gay caravan are now beginning to take on leadership positions all across the United States. Here's a memory of written hopes and demands in Nogales. And again, this is a 2018 post. As you can see right there, it says July of this year. Yeah. She's posting about this. And she says that the first trans gay group, which would have been the 2017 group, right? Mm -hmm. The first caravan, mm -hmm. has a bunch of its leadership that's already in the U.S. that are trans leaders here in the u.s she doesn't name any of them yep. it's just a thing she says has already happened hmm. here's an uh post on gofundme for her hospital bill that i told you was uh, in that article mm -hmm. and you can see it was created by her in odessa texas yeah for for herself to help for the hospital bill it says help me pay for the hospital and if you scroll up she says in that GoFundMe that on May 9th of that year, she was attacked by six to eight men about 20 meters from the Tijuana-San Diego border around 10, 10 a.m. They occurred that the, the attack occurred while they were demanding the government to receive asylum, asylum seek, seek, ah, seekers that are trans and queer. 
They filed a police report, but the aggressors have not been detained. So then she there's a post from this year, another plum fund for Anahuacas Sin Fronteras. Remember the Anahuacas that she was with? Mm -hmm. The women from this continent that she was bringing? That was the first one, I think, oh. of the the first migrant caravan that the little they made the little video for, Anahuacas. Mm -hmm. And here is a Facebook post from August of 2018 of Diversidad saying that they want to thank their sponsors. And I wanted to show you this so you can come be, become familiar with who are some of the people sponsoring this LGBTQI person, particularly, and these caravans. One of them is Pueblo Sin Fronteras. Another one is Al Otro Lado, on the other side. Santa Fe Dreamers Project, Innovation Law, the ACLU, Trans Latinas, Caritas, that's the shelter that got burned, TLC, Identidades Trans, and everyone else not mentioned. Huh. Just an important note. Yeah. Two of those organizations, Al Otro Lado and Pueblo Sin Fronteras, one of which was mentioned in that um, news report, or whatever you want to call it, that yep. you just heard mm -hmm. from Movimiento Cosecha. Um, they're all part of you know the same network, so that's why I think it's important for you to get to know who these folks are. Here is a Facebook post from November of 2018 for Diversidad, posted by Veronique's. Can you see who posted at the top? Oh, no. There's uh, people that are commenting it in it. This is the poster that I showed you earlier okay. for sponsoring queer oh, refugees, yeah. right? This, yep. And if you look at the very bottom in the comments, this was a post that was repo that was originally posted by Veronique's, as you can see up there. <clears throat> Keep going. Nope, it's the wrong way. This is posted by Veronique's Phoenix. That's the person that made the poster and posted it. And you saw Pitaya tell her to correct the email on there. Mm -hmm. And now Diversidad, run by... Uh, Pitaya has posted it, and Isa Chez says, here's a version in Spanish if you need mm -hmm. it, and then um, next we have Isa Chez a year ago with none other than Sophia Walansky from Standing wow. Rock, the woman that got her arm mm -hmm. partially destroyed. Mm -hmm. At Standing Rock, you remember that? Oh, yeah. If you wanted to know that there are very clear connections between the work people working on this migrant caravan campaign and what happened at Standing Rock, look no further. I will show you them over and over and over again. This is not a natural occurring phenomenon. This caravan, this uh, camp at the border, these uh, rush people, caravan goers rushing the, the board. None of this is natural, normal. It is orchestrated. These people are being coached. Mm -hmm. And they are being coached by people that caused violent confrontations between the police and protesters at Standing Rock. And their aim is to do the same again. Here is the same chaise in another picture with Sophia Wolanski last year, folks. Look. You can see that right there. Yep. You both look wonderful. And then Isa Shez says, oh, thanks, Remy Graber. Mm -hmm. Remy Graber is the per person telling her that she looks great. Okay. And then if you look up Remy Graber's posts, you'll find this. Here's a picture of Remy Graber with John Gonzalez. Oh, my God. Of Standing Rock, the guy that was just posting mm -hmm. about his Hunka nephew, mm -hmm. Marcus Mitchell, another person that got injured very yep. severely out at Standing Rock, mm -hmm. who said he was got he had just gotten shot in the chest, except he fabricated the whole thing to wow. defraud people online. And here's John Gonzalez hanging out with one of the other people in that post mm -hmm. that was complimenting Sophia Wolanski. Wow. All Standing Rock related. Here's another pic picture of John Gonzalez, and lest you forget, <laughs> what's the date on this picture? Uh, October 8th. That's this year. Wow. Just last month. And there's LaDonna mm -hmm. and Sophia Wolanski and John Gonzalez all kicking it together. Mm -hmm. Where are they? I wish I could, 
I wish that I could click yeah. my tattoos on my feet and be back at Ochetti Sacoin. Huh. Wow. This is a post by Terry Dubo. And in it, of course, are LaDonna, mm -hmm. Sophia, Walansky, and John, John Gonzalez. Gonzalez yeah. She's been hanging around a lot with people from Standing Rock, mm -hmm. including very, very lately. Here she is, Sophia Walansky. This was just Friday, folks. Wow. This Friday. And here she is with Doug McLean, one of the people that was doing a lot of the filming and has continued to do filming around Standing Rock issues. And where are they? Well, they are at the first uni United Lenape Nations powwow and Standing Ground Symposium hmm. with water protectors, mighty water protectors, right? Right. And if you scroll down, you can see there's Winona LaDuke, there's Sophia Wolanski, and there's Doug McLean. Yep. And remember, Pitaya is well connected to all of this vast network of mm -hmm. activists and fraudsters and grifters and yep. liars and money holders mm -hmm. okay here is another picture of from december posted by pitaya in 2016 mm -hmm. when standing rock was happening she is posting a quote of ladonna's wow just want to make sure y'all see that she knows these people well mm -hmm. loves and followed the standing rock movement was probably closely connected to all its leadership here's one where she was telling people how they could check in at Standing Rock. Do not check in on Facebook when you get to Standing Rock at oh, okay. at Standing Rock uh, Sioux Tribe. Check in at Ochetti Sacoin, mm -hmm. the fake place that was invented just for the protest. Yep, exactly. Because they're two very, very different places. And here uh, is a post from F Facebook in November of 2018 where Comadres... Uh, Con Las Comadres is posting about um, the LGBTQ asylum seekers that have made it to Tijuana, Mexico. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is this year. Wow. And Diversidad Sin Fronteras has a person named Daniela Maria Ugas. That is Venmo. That, that's the Venmo email that you got down there that's okay. receiving the money. So I just wanted to show you this woman and her name. She's associated with... Uh, Pitaya Queen OJ, uh, OJ, um, Queen yeah. Roberto Nakai Flote Guevara, the person that is leading the caravan, hmm. and this person is collecting money on their on their behalf. There's their Gmail. There is their email, and here is a picture of people in that group getting ready to go to the U.S. Mexico border at Friendship Park. They're putting on their makeup. They're getting ready for the picture, folks. Okay, okay. They're definitely getting ready for the picture. Here they are, the Comadres post from Facebook on November 18 in Friendship Park. Here it is, Friendship wow. Park. So they wanted to, to get all dolled up because they're going to go sit up there. There's Nikai. She's holding that sign. <laughs> oh, boy. That's her. Mm -hmm. And she's with some of the other picture people that you just saw pictured. They were getting ready. For this, because it went up on their Instagram, as you can see, mm -hmm. they're not just out there uh, demanding asylum. They these people know how to market themselves. They know how to get reporters' attention. They yeah, have yeah. reporters waiting on their side, ready to go, just like they did at Standing Rock, Duke. Yep. Those articles and the people featured in them didn't just happen organically. It was all a setup, and it is again now. Well, let me just tell you some of the folks that are um, promoting uh, Diversidad Sin Fronteras uh, leader, uh, Pitaya Queen, are somewhat questionable. I would mm -hmm. feel a little bit uh, concerned about the safety of some of these folks. Here's a post from Facebook on November of 2018 by Vero Michelle, uh, Veronica Michelle. Um, this is Diversidad Vero Michelle. Uh, Sorry, this is a. Uh, the dreamers explain the experience that they were waiting for the opening of borders to seek and ask for asylum. There's that Venmo you just saw, mm -hmm. right? Yep. And if you scroll down, there's a group of people that are waiting to request asylum. And if you keep going in the comments, you have a woman named Veronica Michelle saying, Hey, where can we visit? these folks and provide support 
are you still here in Tijuana? And Pitaya, or Diversidad Without Borders, says, we are on the beaches. <laughs> and Veronica says, thank you. Yeah. And Diversidad says, oh, we've already left the beaches. <clears throat> For more information, inbox me. That's right. And here's a post of Vero's on her own page. She actually lives in Tijuana, as you can see. Mm -hmm. um, here's what this uh, post says. If you could make the... Uh, letters just a weensy bit bigger for me. I'm, I've got old eyes. She says, excuse my language. I will give you a content warning. This is a uh, graphic. She says, I'm back in Tijuana this week. So um, get your uh, get your plans in order. Uh, parejitas. Parejitas means couples. Okay. Um, or pairs. Uh, or, you know, partners, get your plans in order, partners, because remember, I am a transsexual pre-op. Have, um, have a yummy time, having a yummy time with these breezes that just make you want to beep, hmm. true or false. And then if you scroll down, you see a picture of her. And she's talking about being horny mm -hmm. and wanting to find some people to have sexual intercourse with wow. in this post. Hmm. You can't scroll down further? Oh, yeah. I wanted you to show the entire post. It's very suggestive. Mm -hmm. She has her hands in between her thighs and she's talking about how horny she is and how she's really hoping she can find someone to have sex with. It's the person that just posted about wanting to find where the caravan was. Yep. Next, here's another post by her. This is another post. Just last month, October 23rd. She says, hey, Tijuana. <clears throat> is there any um, single girl out there, a bisexual girl out there that wants to have a good time with me and my man around the Halloween time? Any suggestions where we could go and uh, join a swingers party? I want to make something clear. I am a transsexual that is versatile. I like to have intercourse. I'm going to clean up the language. Mm -hmm. I like to have intercourse with men and women, but I don't want to make anyone uncomfortable at any party. I prefer privacy and mutual respect. Okay. So that's a little concerning. Yeah. Here's another post by OJ Pitaya saying, hey, and this is very recent. You can see that this is just posted. I think I collected this yesterday. Mm -hmm. where She's talking about how she hasn't been uh, responding to people's Facebook uh, posts or comments or questions because she was in Facebook jail oh. and she um, couldn't get messages or respond to them. But she's now back at it. May our success shine so bright haters will have to burn. Huh. Sorry for you. Yep. I think she actually was off of Facebook like a lot of these phonies that claim that they're in Facebook jail. It's so that they don't have to answer to anyone for why they was hiding. Yep. And I think they was hiding because people found out your true identity and that and which you are connected to, and you decided to go hide. Mm -hmm. So who else is she connected to? Well, she's connected to Chase Iron Eyes organization, Last Real Indians. Here's Matt Remmel, one of the uh, members of that group that was also at Standing Rock and worked very closely with Chase, one of the people that I reached out to about printing the story of Kathleen Bennett, mm -hmm. who refused to do so because Chase Iron Eyes wanted to help the kidnapper, Mulaney Stoneman, yep. as I told you about. She retweeted him. Hmm. Here's someone else that she knows. She knows the last real Indians, as you can see. Here she is in October of 2016 posting an article that comes from the last real Indians. Want to show them? There it is. It's a last real Indians article. Hmm. And here is... Uh, Lakota Law Project post and she says 
Oh, Linda. Hmm. Oh, pretty. Uh, About a picture of Tocada. Mm -hmm. And in the background is the granddaughter of Ladana that got oh, arrested. Yeah was left naked in a jail, according to her allegations mm -hmm. against Morton County. This is Sarah Jumping Eagle and Chase Iron Eyes's daughter, Takata Iron Eyes. And of course, this is from last Real Indians. Mm -hmm. If you scroll down further, you will see that it is Takata yeah. at the North Dakota Capitol. Mm -hmm. Next, we have a post from Pitaya about the Lakota Law Project. Can you read that one, dude? Yes, Native American men are incarcerated at four times the rate of white men. Native American women are incarcerated at six times the rate of white women, according to a report compiled by the Lakota People's Law Project. Mm -hmm. It was posted on March 26, 2017. Right. Native Americans are just unseen victims of broken U.S. justice system. She is also familiar with Winnea Locke. Here she is in a Facebook post from 2016 posting about... Wania, so much anger, stay strong. <laughs> she also knows Indigenous Rising Media. Yeah. Here she is posting one of their uh, videos or stories in 2016, in yep. November. That's right, November 24th. He, she's also familiar with Unicorn Riot. Here she is posting one of their articles about the, the North Dakota budget bureaucracy behind no dapple mm -hmm. in october of 2016 she's also familiar with bs norrell she 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 is sharing one of their articles from september wow um and here she is posting miko's oh, the, daily the daily haze, haze. wow in an article about american indians and native americans be forced to remove water is life flag from the mall. <laughs> Here's a report. Here's a post where she uh, is um, sharing the red red warrior camp, the red warrior yeah. uh, camp uh, post. So she's familiar with uh, all of the red warriors, including Cody, I'm sure, mm -hmm. and um, uh, the uh, attorney that was working for the WPLC. If you scroll down, so people can see the complete post. You'll be able to see it's from the Red Warrior Society mm -hmm. that she is sharing. Here she is sharing a post including Prolific and Candy Mossett. It tagged wow. in the post. It's supposedly a picture of the infiltrator that um, tried to push Candy Mossett into the police line oh, in yeah. the video. I remember that. And she's, she's tagged in the post, and the post comes from Prolific, the rapper. Wow. Here she is posting about Dallas Goldtooth in on facebook in july of 2017 she's reposting dallas goldtooth's post mm -hmm. and in this facebook post from june of 2017 she's actually requesting the ein contact saying it's urgent anybody got the direct contact for the indigenous leaders of indigenous environmental network it's urgent it has to do with the 500 plus displaced peoples campesinos of el peten guatemala and to that post gold tooth comments on uh facebook saying hello i will message you now yeah so wow. definitely been in contact with ein and we have also her sharing a petition of dallas gold tooths that she just signed wow please for the lapan apache isn't she a lapan apache mm -hmm. right so here is a post of hers from Facebook on November 16, on November of 2016, excuse me, where she's sharing free red fawn, everybody. Oh, yeah. And here is a post from hers in 2017 where she is posting about Grandma oh, Regina, Regina Brave yes. at Standing Rock, mm -hmm. who was there at the very, very end with uh, this is a post by Greg Gray Cloud, one yep. of the one of the headsmen, mm -hmm. along with Menape Lamare. And here she is posting about LaDonna and Candy Mossett and Jacelyn Charger. Wow. All from Standing Rock. Here she is posting about Phyllis Young. Oh, <laughs> jeez. In 2017. But don't you just think that she, don't just believe that she has a lot of connections with 
famous people and important mm-hmm. people and powerful people out at Standing Rock. Okay? Going to Harvard has its privileges. She may not have come from a poor family. She herself claims that she was from a middle class family. But she's certainly in with the big boys now. And she has a lot of media contacts as well. Yeah, She's familiar with a lot of the media people. Let me show you. Here is um, Mark Lane post. He uh, Rebel HQ was kind of born after the TYT scandal with Jordan Sheridan okay. raping one of his reporters. They started at, 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 in, in the beginning... All of the Truth Against the Machine and all of these other media platform people that were reporting out at Standing Rock were getting thrown onto Rebel, I mean, um, TYT Network. Yep. They were being put on TYT Network directly. But after the debacle of the rape and Truth Against mm-hmm. the Machine going defunct, Rebel HQ became the TYT channel. Rebel HQ is with TYT. And so is Mark Lane. For those of you who are uninitiated, uh, the Young Turks is the correct and full name of that organization. I also told you that that is also where Wesley Clark came out of. That's who started to share the information about the veterans going out to Standing Rock. And you can see that Rebel HQ is tagged with Mark Lane right now at the anti-immigrant protest in Tijuana. Wow. Shouting Mexico first. Mm -hmm. They're trying to paint Mexicans as nationalists just like the people that follow Trump. This is false news, folks. This is misinformation. And this is a columbusing and an exploitation by American corporations, by American media organizations that want to go and malign Mexicans under the guise of being the real heroes, the real protectors of the migrants of the brown people. No, they ain't. Hmm. Here is one of the producers of TYT. She's the producer and project manager at the Young Turks. Her name is Gina Kim. She is currently with Mark Lane in Tijuana. What does it say he posted there? Looks like uh, this is posted uh, probably today. It looks like Tijuana... PD is getting ready to do something. Gina Kim. That was yesterday. That was yesterday. And as you saw, it was completely in the video you just watched Mm -hmm. from Cosecha. Yeah. Completely peaceful. Wow. The cops were playing, literally playing with the little children. Mm Mm-hmm. He said that he makes it sound so ominous. Yeah. Nothing happened. Mm Mm-hmm. Next, I will show you his own post. (coughs) Oh, it says Mark Lane is at TYT Network. November 21st at 404, Culver City, doing my thing. Right. So I just wanted to show you, they are with TYT. Rebel HQ is part of TYT. Mm -hmm. Mark Lane is doing reporting in Tijuana on behalf of TYT and works for TYT. Mm -hmm. And here he is with Pitaya. Oh. You see her at the table? Yeah. There they are. The LGBTQI caravan with Mark Lane. Wow. Okay. So, folks, this is what we are really up against in Mexico and on the United States side, too, because the camps are going to get built up on both sides. Yay. And the violence and the mayhem only go up from here. Tune into my show next time when I will show you more of the bad actors more of the fraudsters that are going to Tijuana to Columbus, Mexico and create the new standing rock of migrants on the border. Thanks for being here on a Mexican crossing lines, 88.1 FM KPPP LP, where we are adding local color to your airways, airwaves. Buenas noches.